Good evening. Welcome to the Deerfield Select Board Sewer Study Committee meeting on Thursday, March 15, 2018 at 6 o'clock in the evening here in the main meeting room at yeah. Town Hall. I am actually um, going to turn over the meeting to Wendy. She's going to talk about the process in the agenda and, and the um, evaluation sheets. My, my, um, it's, it's not cut, and, you know, it's not absolute, but my thought was that Wendy would ask the questions of the, um, of all the, of the two engineering firms, and we would answer, keep track of their answers, and then collectively um, score them. So, okay. Um, I'll turn hello. it over to. I uh, just wanted to run through um, what you have in front of you. You should all have this packet, which um, the first page is the process, which includes the email that was sent, um, and uh, the next, the back of that should be more attached. Me? Should yes. we call the meeting to order? She I just did. did. Uh, I'm not about the source oh, study. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I called both together because there was no, I didn't realize you had a, um, because Kip had, um, I think it's okay for her to Bruce, call I mean, the two, I don't, I, two I'm committees. Just, oh, did, uh, Bruce, are you the acting chair? I didn't, yeah, yes, I didn't realize I'm, that you yeah. voted your chair. I apologize. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. No, no, I'm sorry. I, I was doing uh, it for both. Okay. Um, is, uh, Replacement Chair of the Sewer Study Committee. I'm calling you this meeting, uh, joint committee uh, meeting with the Select Board at 6.05 p.m. I'm sorry, Bruce. I didn't realize that you were voted out. Sure, Chair. Okay. So many of you, who, and certainly all of you who are on the Sewer Study Committee, um, probably know what you have in front of you. But um, upon the advice of our um, unofficial member, Josh Schimmel, who um, lives in the community, has been helping us, and I've been working with him. Uh, this uh, request for responses was sent out. Um, this top page has the email um, that they received. It was sent to Stantec, Woodward & Curran, AECOM, and um, Dave Prickett Consulting uh, contacted me independently. What would you, what? Um, I would just like to correct, it's Woodward and Curran, not Woodward and Curran. That's just okay. a minor thing. Just, All right. Yeah. I took it off his. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you for the correction. Yeah. Um, so that was sent out. Um, AECOM declined. Uh, Woodard and Curran, maybe that's why they did not respond. It didn't bounce back. Um, it did not bounce back. And, um, yeah, okay. To the request and subsequent email messages. Okay. Stantec responded, and as I said, David Prickett Engineering, or it's actually David Prickett Consulting, initiated the contact. So there you see the RFR. I believe you've all received this. I emailed it to you as well. Um, <clears throat> the, so I'm, I'm just actually going through the agenda here. I do expect at um, 6.30 um, Stantec representatives to be here. Um, and I've got questions here that I've worked with Josh on. Um, I had not anticipated reading all of them myself, um, but um, if you would like to uh, help me out with that, I w might appreciate that. Let's see okay. how I do. But, um, and I've asked um, both of the consultants, I've let them know that we, are, we had to meet publicly, um, and, and that means it would also likely be televised as it is being televised and um, the newspaper reporter is here tonight so I've asked them though not to be here when the other gives their presentation I see Trevor coming in the door now um, so they'll each have a PowerPoint I understand and they'll present that um, what, what's the other question the question I gave you two of these so you could write notes and answer. I, I'm just going to finish. I know. Um, so you could write notes and you can about each of the consultants. Okay. Yes. Did they receive this prior? To no. I was thinking of handing that to them, but no, I did not so give they that had to them. No time to well, they they have the RFR. Excuse me, Wendy. Do you, do you have another copy? Mine doesn't have the double spacing for notes. That, the questions. I left. I left them at your seat. You, you, I left you packets. Oh, oh, I told. Okay. 
I'm sorry. There should be okay. two sets of questions. I, I, went, I, I put I um, everything in front of everybody's seat. 16 questions. All right. Um, and then we'll, we'll open it up for questions afterwards. The, the, re I, the reason I wanted Wendy to, to read it and not be bouncing around for all of us to ask <coughs> questions is I want to make sure that we're consistent in getting um, answer, you know, everyone's taking notes so that we can compare the two and we can discuss who, what we want um, and what's the priority to us. Uh, after the after they have their presentations, because we have to decide who we want to go with, and and we also have to decide how we want to approach um, what we're going to do. Do we want it phased in? Do we want a, an all-encompassing project? Do we want both? Do we want one? Um, well, I think uh, Carolyn, um, what was presented by. Um, Josh, as a recommendation to, for moving forward, was to this is kind of a preliminary part yes. to talk and get some ideas that would inform, um, you know, get a sense of who you might like to work with, but also inform yeah. what we would do going forward with a request. Um, we don't have to go out to bid for this, it's engineering services, no. um, but putting together a whatever we'd call it, requ another request for response, a request for. Um, Proposals, but we, I call it something else. At any rate, if we don't want to actually go out to bid, but we may we may choose to do that. Um, but we would it would help us get a better sense of what is out there and what other, what other experiences um, these consultants have working with communities like us or or others, local, recent projects, whatever. We'll glean that from the uh, answers they give us and the presentation that they do at first. But this is just, as Josh had recommended, correct me if anybody has a different sense of what he recommended, but this was just an initial, more casual conversation as opposed to interview to hire. It's not, it's, we're not at that necessarily. That's not well, necessarily going to happen. Now I see someone coming, um, and I just want to. Well, my thought is that. that we keep having studies. And why are we spending money on studies if we're not willing to go forward? So we need to make sure we're forming an opinion on what we want to go forward with and, and how do we want to do it and what, what one of these two is going to meet our needs, if they're going to meet our needs. Or if we don't want it, neither one seems to be the way that we want to go or they're not going to be flexible enough to work with us, then we make that decision and we move on. But we, we are going to make a decision on, hopefully, on um, how we want to proceed. And we want, obviously, to pick a company that is going to work with us to achieve something in a reasonable time frame and at a reasonable cost. And that means being whatever. But, so okay. this, but the re this request is for, this is for, just a, a, it's for a this is a, a conversation, study. right. It's for a study. It's right. Not for, it's not for actual engineering work to design a network. But if we don't have a company that is going to willing to work, I mean, the idea is to pick someone that was willing to work with us and not have okay. another useless study. Right. But I mean, we have, we have so many studies that we I aren't acting on. I agreement. And, uh, you know, as I, as I said last night, I thought he, 2014 laid out a plan, and I think it's a good one. It breaks down the issues into individual tasks. I'm not sure that we need another overall assessment. I think we I think we know what the issues are if you read the and if you read how about can I suggest um, okay finish I'm so so I'm just saying that that this is a that this is a roadmap to uh, that that Keith created in 2014 to deal with the the issues in these points has anything changed from 2014. Yes. Gotten worse. <laughs> well, things have gotten worse. Things got worse. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's updated in 2016. 
Okay. What, what I could add to this is that the, the last sewer study uh, meeting that we had, I think it was, I think November, uh, it was the consensus of the board that we just didn't have the expertise to know what parts to go forward and that we wanted to speak to somebody. So that's, it's taken this much time just to get to this point. So. And I would imagine that. Could, and I agree with you, Ben, but now I, I feel like we, you know, we all of us spent a year and a half. Well, to be honest with you, Jack, I, I mean, I, I didn't, I mean, I was just part of what, seven of us, and, and I didn't agree with that assessment at that time, but I moved it forward, right. um, you know, so I. I think the way we proceed is taking that information, taking all the information we have, and having that be integrated into this next step and, the, mm -hmm. you know, how they're going to approach it and phase it and all of that. I don't think that this would be ignored. I don't think it should be ignored. It won't no, be ignored. No. I, I don't think so. I mean, great expertise. But would share all that, that with you. No, no, no I, I'm, I'm very anxious to hear what they have to, what yeah. they have to say. We're all confident. To but, I, but I'm not sure they're going to they're going to have a magic wand that's going to solve. You're right. Uh, no, right. You know. No, but the idea is to we need to decide who we want to work with and how we're going to move forward. But isn't that another, if you hire a, and this is, I'm, I'm asking this question because I don't know. Okay. So when you hire a, an engineering firm to do a study like that, that's one thing. When you hire an engineering firm to design a. We may, we may go there, right? I mean, I think, we, I think you're right, Jack. Is that, a great that's, a different, that's a different I think it is. Firm. Yeah, right. it is. It is. Right? So, so we it might decide. We might decide that we don't we don't want to hire either of these outfits. We or we want to hire a firm to design a, a headworks, for well, example. They, they, these are firms that are capable. The, of these, are capable these are firms of that are capable yeah. of. Yes, yeah. you're right. And maybe somebody else too when when that RFP goes out. Right. I agree with you. But we don't have to RFP if people feel really comfortable. Right. If we feel comfortable that we have a mm -hmm. that we have a direction. Right. Then we don't. We don't need and that's to do why that. we're all here, is so everyone could figure yes, out sure. what. What happened to the old paperwork for the Headworks project that we approved two years or three years ago, and the uh, Capital Improvement Committee voted to authorize that thing to go forward, yeah. and then all of a sudden we went from that $1.4 million project to a $3.5 million Headworks project with all kinds of flash and bang where we're well as I understand it they the the engine Weston and Sampson drew up plans for the three and a half million dollar project which which we didn't which need. we don't want we, we don't didn't need it so Back there are there are plans for that but they but they're useless but what happened to the plans for the 1.4 million dollar project I don't know if we did any plans I don't think we did those plans because <clears throat> I thought I, I that was done but I we approved and the capital improvement committee they approved a $1.4 million expense, and I know on Finance Committee we approved it too, and did that but nothing voted? was ever done. Did that get voted at town meeting, no? I don't think so. Did it get voted at town meeting, John? Do you remember? I don't no. think. No. I'm, I'm going to stick my nose in here, and I'm not 100% sure, but I believe after that, that's when <clears throat> Weston and Sampson was called in, and from all the research I could do, they had conversations with Keith, Kevin, and the select board. And then after gathering the information, the input from the, those individuals, they sat down and drew the plans that we currently have. But it, it grew substantially. I think maybe going after that, was it, you know, the grant kind of well, got out of it. No, I, I think. No, because the grant was after that, the, well, okay. way before, after that. I, but that was part of well, the memos this is that. We're going in circles. This is, this is old news. That was what, part of the memos. That's what memo. Matt said last night. <laughs> so, anyway, anyway, to answer your question, John, that those, those plans exist. I'm going to invite them in to yes. set up. Yes, that'd be great. Okay. <clears throat> The plans exist for the three and a half million dollar one, right? Which we don't need, don't want. Right. We want the old one point four million dollar one. Maybe it's one point five or one point six they, now. Those, they were never plans that I it found was for that. One point two million for the headworks, which included a heated space. It was three and a half million to also upgrade the aeration tanks and add a secondary clarifier, and then <coughs> it was, gee, let's look at the long haul, like fifty year horizon 
and the most bang for the buck would have been closing Old Deerfield, force mating it to south, upgrading south, and then maybe regionalizing so that we, they would be available to help pay for it. That's when it ballooned out to upward of 20 to $30 million. That's what scared everybody, and that's when this committee was formed. But any of those permutations are possible. It's just a matter of making up your mind. Well, what I think they, really they said the do. highest priority was still the headworks. Mm -hmm. And I think we all agree. The highest that priority at this point is the secondary clarifier. Yeah, right because now. the one we have in service is damaged. Yeah. And if it goes all the way, there is no backup. So that is actually now in the forefront over and above <laughs> rag removal, which is desperately needed as well. So, you know, we can pick and choose and do them one at a time. We can do some of them all at once. Or, well, we're better off to start yeah. and do something rather than doing nothing, which we've been doing for three years. I agree. Absolutely. We're better off to do something. So, so did you secondary cl clarifier is more important, then that's what we should concentrate on, try and get that drawn out and done, get yeah. going. So the clarifier doesn't interfere with the headworks, and the there, headworks doesn't. One is at the beginning of the plant, one's the, the other one's at the end. Yeah. Right. So they don't, they don't conflict with each other in any way, you don't. They, you don't, you don't lack make of a the mistake. headworks right now, the lack of having no headworks, or the lack of having one, is letting everything in as usual, all the garbage, all the grease, all the grit, all the rags, all the strings and hair, everything goes in there. What's happening is when flow picks up like it is now because of the cycling of frozen water and then melting, our flow has doubled since November. We're up to, we're between 500 and 600,000 now. So a lot of that fat that's always on the aeration tank, which isn't being removed at the beginning of the plant, is now being shoved, part of it's being carried through, coming out of the center well. The center well is poofing up and then spilling out onto the surface. Normally there is a skimmer arm that takes that and puts it into a hopper and conveys it into a, a chamber that we then have to pay someone like Greg's to come and pump out. Well, now the skimmer arm being damaged is not skimming the surface anymore. So we have all this fat and some trash and everything else floating all across the top of the secondary clarifier. And that's the last stop before it gets chlorinated and goes out into the river. So, and it's an ironic situation because treatment over there could not be better than it is right now without further aid like better aeration or chemical precipitation or something like that. But, and it's odd that we have the best quality effluent ever than we ever have. And part of that's through a trial I've been running with a third party company with their product. Um, saving money and on uh, sludge hauling. But it's all kind of being offset now by all this fat and trash that's being allowed to collect on the polishing vessel that's supposed to be the last stop before chlorination and ultimately the Connecticut River. So that really needs to be fixed and it's old. It's 30 plus, 33 years old now. It's never been overhauled. The drive has never been fixed or maintained really much to do with it at all until now. And now the rake arm is below the surface, so it's not skimming anything. And it, it, the drag on that motor has increased exponentially. So, yes. When did this all happen, Keith? Is the first time it happened with that deep freeze we had in December. We could not keep the, circ the circumference of that clarifier de-iced, even running continuous water to keep everything uh, in motion, it didn't matter. And when it really happened was we managed to do it all week and then the weekend came and it was, you know, four below with wind chill of negative 20 and the ice just grew outward and then the skimmer arm hung up on it and bent and it got damaged and now it's submerged and dragging beneath the surface. So we don't have a backup right. to go to. Can it be removed and straightened? Not without taking the clarifier out of surface and with no backup you can't do that. Just, I was going to say, if the skimmer, skimmer arm's underwater not doing its job, what would be the harm of just removing it and letting it? Well, it would be about the same as what it's doing right now, which is absolutely nothing, and right. letting all the fat, grease, trash, and everything else yeah, float on the that's surface. That's my point. So if, you, if it could be taken off and fixed in a day or so. Well, if it can be taken off, it can be fixed because you have to drain the tank to get to it. You have to drain the tank to get to yeah. it? Yeah. It's an 18-foot deep tank, and it's... It it's just connects the arm, at the drive. Does the arm not bolt onto it somehow? I don't know how. Yeah, it's it bolts connected. onto the center mechanism, drive mechanism, and then extends out from there. Yeah. And all that from about halfway out to the the outer edge is underwater yep. now. 
So. <clears throat> okay. Okay, so you've heard a bit about the current issues with the plan. <laughs> would you Is mind um, introducing yourself? Uh, not mine, but would you please introduce yourselves? And also, would the group go around and just say what committee or, or board you're on? Or work for the town, or how are we going to say? Uh, my name is Brian Shea, and I'm with Stan Tech Consulting. And I'm Steve Calabro. I'm a project manager, senior project manager at Stan Tech, and I visited the plant and talked to a little bit with so. Thank you. Bob, do you want to go ahead? Bob Decker. I'm on the Sewer Study Committee. Bob. John Pachark, Sewer Study. John Pareski, Sewer Study. Keith Mellon, Chief Operator. Jeff Upton, Sewer Study. Bruce St. Peter's uh, Sewer Study. Uh, Kip Camosa, Selectman. Carolyn Ness, Selectman. Trevor McDaniel, Selectman. Wendy Foxman, Town Administrator. Uh, Jack Davey uh, on the Sewer Study Committee and the Capital Improvement Committee. Excellent. That's good. So, so we put together a little presentation that we can go through. Okay. Did you want, want to turn the lights down a little bit? Or? How does this work? Would you like the lights down? I, I will do that if you. Sure. sure. Okay. Yeah. All right. Sure. <laughs> so again, thanks. Uh, again, my name is Brian Shea. I uh, want to thank you very much for forwarding the RFP to us uh, for the needs assessment um, and you know, condition survey on the, on the full wastewater collection system. Again, as Steve had mentioned, we were out um, you know, back in the fall. Uh, we're asked to come out and uh, take just take a quick look at the at the plant and met with Kip and Wendy afterwards. Uh, I know the town has since put together the RFP that we have responded to, and again, thanks for having us here tonight. And we, what we wanted to do was just walk through the presentation uh, that we've put together, which is essentially the approach that we would recommend um, that the town of Deerfield undertake for this. Um, assessment of the existing conditions of not only the plant, but the full uh, collection system and the pump station as well. Uh, so we put together uh, this agenda uh, to outline uh, the items that we wanted to go through. I'm going to start with uh, just a little bit of information on the team that we would identify uh, for, to put together. Steve, you want to share? So, stay in touch. Um, we, uh, so Steve and I, again, have been out here. We have identified a group of individuals with expertise uh, that, in the various categories of work that we would envision this project uh, playing out. Uh, and a lot of these resources we have in-house. So we have, so Steve and I are in the water group at Stantec. Uh, we have experience on the on mechanical process, wastewater treatment side of things. In-house, we have electrical engineering staff, we have mechanical HVAC staff. So all of the uh, disciplines of work that come into play on projects like these, we have the resources right within our four walls uh, to undertake the work. So this is just some of the people that we have. Um, so Stantec. So we have offices throughout the Northeast. In total, we're a 22,000 person firm. I don't want you to be overwhelmed by that, but I want you to take away from tonight's meeting is Stantec is Brian and Steve. Um, I was telling Steve a little analogy. My daughter is at Penn State University. She's finishing up, and when she went there, we were a little nervous about, you know, our daughter being lost in this great big sea of humanity down at, at Penn State, being one of 50,000. And, you know, not, nothing could be further from the truth. Her advisor reached out to her before she set foot on campus. She has a great group of friends. She has small classes there. She's able to make that large university as small as she wants, and that works for her. I, I see Stantec in the same way. Yes, we have, we're a 22,000-person firm. We have resources across the country, across, across the globe that we can reach out to. But you're not going to have 22,000 people working on this project, obviously. The people that you have are <laughs> our local staff, uh, we have an office in Northampton. We've identified staff in that office that we would like to, to be involved here. Steve and I are an hour and a half of uh, drive away uh, as well. So, so that's a quick overview on Stantec. Uh, again, we can serving communities like this is the wheelhouse of our business. 
and we had done you know, numerous projects throughout New England. Uh, we'll just touch upon uh, a few of them in a couple of slides, but we are local. Uh, we're responsive. You know, we didn't. The reason that we have we do so much municipal work is you know, we understand communities and we understand that we need to be responsive, maintain communications. Uh, with staff, keep uh, with the, with our clients, keep everybody up to speed on how the projects are progressing. Uh, maintain communication is a key key part of our core business, uh, and we're experienced. Uh, the you know the three key lead personal personnel that we have identified: Steve, myself, uh, and Danny Rebello in our Northampton office. Together, have over 75 years experience. All of it in the wastewater industry, uh, water wastewater uh, collection system evaluation, pumping station evaluation, treatment plants designs and evaluations. So throughout New England, I'm not going to get into every single one of these, but this is really offered to demonstrate the experience that we have throughout New England on pumping stations. We projects include evaluations. They include new designs for new construction. What we see a lot of now is rehabilitation and upgrades on existing uh, pump stations. It's not only pumping stations, but wastewater treatment plants as well. Uh, just a quick listing of some of the projects throughout uh, New England that, that our firm has been involved with. Um, again, evaluations of and Condition assessments is a key, is a core part of our work right now. A uh, lot well, plants that have been in place 30, 40, 50 years, uh, they, they perhaps have been upgraded once uh, or twice, but they're constantly needing attention. Um, improvements, certainly permitting conditions change, uh, the communities need to uh, be responsive to as well, which results in changes and upgrades to technology, which we assist communities with daily. So uh, I'm going to turn it over to Steve now. Uh, he's just going to get into more detail on the approach that we've put together specific to uh, the Deerfield. Thanks, Mike. Open this for you. Sure, sure, that'd be great. So, um, so my goal is, my purpose here is to just go through the full scope of work. Um, like Brian said, we did visit the plant. Um, we did read the, the scope that you provided, and so we've tailored the scope of work uh, to meet that. So I just wanted to go over, you know, just a quick review of your resources, uh, the assets that you have for wastewater treatment, and we do consider them assets. I, I know you spend a lot of money on them, but they really are assets, and if you had to develop those from scratch, it would be quite an expensive process. So you have the South Deerfield treatment plant, that's your main facility, Old Deerfield, which is a much smaller, treatment plant, but still a, a separate plant. And then there's the uh, Captain Moultra pump station, which is your major pump station. And then the South Deerfield collection system, which um, I took a quick look, has 258 manholes, which gives you a rough idea of the size. And then the old Deerfield collection system, which is much smaller, about 70 manholes. So um, our approach basically um, is, is very collaborative, like Brian has said. We really like to keep our clients involved um, when we do condition assessments um, with immediate and long-term needs, um, you know, options for practical solutions to meet what I think are your objectives, which is basically meet regulatory considerations um, and also uh, make sure everything is uh, resilient and considering budgets. That's the <laughs> So what I've done is I've broken up uh, I've broken up the project into basically eight tasks. So task one is to review previous reports. Task two is inspection and evaluation. Three would then be to develop some alternatives or recommendations, and then task four would be a workshop with the committee. So we'll go through everything that we've developed so far. We'll talk things through, ask a bunch of questions. Why did you figure this? Why did you figure that? Um, so that you know, so right away at that point you're up to speed. Uh, after that, we produce a draft report. We'd have input from folks who produce a draft report. We'd submit that to you, 
And then uh, the next task is we'll do a little bit of affordability and look at some funding options. Because no matter what you propose, if you can't afford it, what's the, what's the sense? Then um, task seven, we do a second workshop. So we sit down with you folks. Again, you'd have comments because you would have reviewed the report. We would present you know, what we found out as far as affordability and very various funding options. We'd put our heads together and we'd talk about what type of implement implementation plan. So then from there, we would develop a final report, uh, which would have the imp implementation plan, cost estimates, that type of thing. So I'm just going to go through uh, each one in a little bit more detail. So task one, we review, uh, there's been two big reports done, the 1999 and 2005 engineering reports by Weston Sampson. There's some good information in that, along with any associated correspondence and some of the prior designs. Um, we've reviewed the existing NPDES permits. That's the permit that you have with the EPA and the state to allow you to discharge. Um, and then we'd, um, Keith will get us three years of operating records. We'll have one of the smart young interns in the office put them together in a, in a nice spreadsheet and develop some graphs. So we'll have a good sense of what's going on. We'll look at flows, you know, informed BOD and suspended solids, whatever you have, and then effluent BOD and suspended solids. And then we'll just perform a desktop evaluation of flows and treatment performance so that when we come to talk with you folks, we can give you that information. And we'd summarize it. Usually what we do is when we finish a task, we like to just put it together in just a, a memo. We have a standard memo form, and then we can, we can pass that along. Then the second task is the actual inspection and evaluation. This is where uh, we'd come out to the treatment plant, we'd go through the plant, we'd uh, probably be myself, I'd probably bring uh, an electrical instrumentation expert from our office, um, and maybe, a, maybe a, a mechanical person, we'll see. So we'll review the, um, the two treatment plants and the pump station, that's sort of the mechanical side, and then we prepare a condition assessment memorandum on, on that evaluation. And then the next piece, uh, you did ask uh, to do an evaluation of the collection system. Um, so we would arrange for a physical condition assessment. Um, and we, we would think about doing that with, uh, there's a technology that's out there that's called a pole camera and laser scanning technology, where what happens is a uh, company will pop the manhole, they have a camera that goes on down the pole and it rotates, and it does a complete inspection down the manhole, looks upstream and downstream, so you get a little idea of what the, uh, what the pipeline condition is. And then from that assessment, you know, we do uh, an inventory and, and condition assessment now. Uh, you, got, you folks do have two pretty good um, maps of your collection system, which is really good. That's a really important start. Um, the one thing we, we, you know, sort of the approach we use, we call it the uh, SWOT approach, where we come in with subject wastewater experts um, to, you know, to look at the treatment plants uh, from a process standpoint and also, um, you know, just using site visits to look at the condition uh, of, of what's going on. And, um, you know, we do have practical people. Like Brian said, if I have a question, I can make a couple of phone calls and I can get whatever information. So then we go to task three, that's alternatives and recommendations. We'll use the information from phase one and phase two and we'll consider various alternatives, develop some immediate and long-term uh, recommendations. Uh, and at that point, we'll also uh, prepare an order of magnitude cost. So again, you know, we'll, we'll have a list at this point of everything that we see, and we'll have a rough cost of you know, what those represent from the construction standpoint. And again, we put that in a little summary memo, and pass it out to you folks. So as we go along, they'll be, you know, we'll have everything done. Uh, and then we'll have uh, the worst first workshop, and this is where we'll prevent the, present our findings, uh, we'll talk things through, we'll get input from you folks, and um, you know, I mean, it's, it's an open discussion, so you can say, Steve, that's stupid, why, why are you doing this? We'd rather do it this way. That's, that's all fine. Be completely open, you know. Uh, so, you know, we'll talk about priorities. Uh, upcoming construction type projects. And we'll try to establish at that point uh, sort of a way forward going into the draft report. 
So at this point, we've, we would have had a bunch of memos on some work that we've done. We haven't spent a bunch of money doing a report until we meet with you folks and get your feedback on what that's so far. And this is usually when we have a workshop, we usually do minutes. You know, it's always a good idea to you know, get things reporting. That's exactly what they do. So in task five, we go to the draft report and utilize the work we did in phases one and four. Just threw that out the window. Um, incorporate whatever feedback we got from the committee. Um, the report will be you know, prioritized, a prioritized implementation plan, which is what we do. And we'll also include the current and future needs. All this was already done. The manuals, and the manuals. we'll submit that draft report to the committee and um, you know, get any review comments that you have as you go over. Um, while you're reviewing that report, what we'll do at that point is we'll do um, some affordability and look at some funding options. Um, and one of the reasons for that is to try to figure out at some point, you know, we'll look at your rates and we'll look at how far you can push your rates to make it to the point where it's considered not unaffordable. And there's some EPA guidelines on what that means. And also, obviously, whatever is out there for funding options would be very important. Uh, and again, we'll put that in a, just a summary memo. And at that point, we'll move to task seven, which is when we'll have the second workshop. So we'll come out, you will have read the draft report. You can give us whatever comments you have. We'll report to you on you know, the affordability work and the various funding options that we have. And, um, and at that point, we'll review our proposed implementation plan and funding. And we'll talk it through. What makes sense? What do you think you know, folks in town would, would be willing to, how far would they be willing to go? What direction do you want? Do you want to do small little projects every year? Do you want to pull the Band-Aid off and do one big project? We'll look at the uh, impacts of, of those type of projects. And again, we'll try to establish a way forward for the final report. And uh, we'll do minutes of that. So the whole idea is that when you get the final report, which is obviously cascaded, you're not going to read anything that you didn't have an idea that what we were going to talk about. We would have already talked about a bunch of stuff. You're not going to read the one and say, oh, this is a pile of bullshit for a crime, right? Because we would have talked it through, and there'll be recommendations and things in there that we've already discussed. Um, so, uh, you know, we'll incorporate again uh, the feedback that we got from uh, phase seven for the workshop. And again, the report will include prioritized implementation plan, cost estimates, and funding recommendations. And we'll submit the final report to you folks uh, for any review and comment. Um, and then I think what we'd like to do is we'd just like to have a concluding meeting. Uh, we'll review any comments of the final report. Uh, we'll receive any input, thoughts, comments. Uh, but the most important thing at that point would be to try to establish the next steps to implement the recommendations of the report, right? So we'll figure out, okay, here's the report, yeah, it sounds great, we're on board with the implementation plan, what's next? And, um, and at that point, you know, we'll be available to, um, to answer any questions. So, you wanna, sure. So that's the, that's the approach that we put together um, in response to the RFP uh, that you have extended to us. Uh, I think that you know, our firm is a good, is a good choice for Deerfield. Why we have the resources that we're going to need to undertake all aspects of this work in-house. We can coordinate each of those resources very well. You know, whether it's in-house meetings, whether it's um, conference calls, Skype calls, uh, we're in constant communication uh, with team members uh, to make sure that the project is staying on track, on schedule, and that all the information that we learn is fully communicated to you as well. Uh, we have resources nearby. Uh, our One of the lead project engineers is at our Northampton office and he can be here a uh, very short time to be responsive to any issues that may come up. Our experience that our firm has in wastewater treatment, uh, collection system engineering uh, is extensive. 
the staff that we have has many, many years experience. Uh, it's just not uncommon for people in our group to have longevity with the firm as well. I'm over 30 years with Stantec. Steve um, in, has been over 15, including the, uh, the firm that, that Stantec acquired as, as they joined. Um, so the longevity comes into play with all the staff that we have. We've worked together. We've, we're comfortable undertaking projects of, of this scope. So we have, again, experts in the local offices, but as available, other industry experts. If uh, there are issues that we need to reach out to, um, they're a phone call away and available to us. And that expertise is by, by extension available to you as well. The approach that we've put together is not something that we've, we've had to dream up. Um, as Steve and I uh, look through the approach and uh, in response to the RFP, this is an approach that we're, have done on numerous occasions with numerous municipalities. Uh, it's a methodology that, that proves true. But the key thing, though, is it keeps the client involved throughout the process. And that has uh, been one of the major points that I think leads to the success on projects that we've been involved with is involvement uh, with the client throughout the process. So, and lastly, like all our clients, we would absolutely value you as a, as a client as well. So, so with that, um, certainly we welcome any questions that you have or any comments that you'd like to offer. Thank you. Think about your new screen right there. <laughs> well, I was going to say, is that your offices? It looks familiar. What? <laughs> You, I, I, I said, gee, their office looks a lot like our treatment plant. <laughs> <laughs> so. Question. Do you have a printout of that presentation? I was going to ask that. So what Can we you can email do is it to me? The, um, the stick with okay. you. All right. Uh, Wonderful. So you've got it. I can make this copies for copies. anybody yeah. who wants. Yeah. I think it'd be helpful. Yeah. 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 We weren't exactly sure how many to bring. So. Sure. Neither was I. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So. One That's why like you're uh, welcome to that. As long as I have the floor. How yes. many um, professionals are in your Northampton office? Uh, the Northampton office has, what, about 15 or so yeah. uh, in that office. Thank you. So we have yeah, a... That, that oh, office, sorry. not to interrupt, no. sorry, uh, has full connectivity to all offices as well. So if I need to go and work out of the Northampton office for a day, I plug my laptop in, and it's as though I'm at my desktop uh, at my office as well. We have that uh, continuity throughout all Stantec offices. Where's your main office? The main office, so the parent office is Edmonton. Uh, so it's a can Stantec is a Canada-based uh, firm. Okay. Currently have half, probably 7,000 employees in Canada. I think we're up around eight or 9,000 employees throughout the United States right now. Locally, uh, our, the, the water group that Steve and I are affiliated with, our main office is in Burlington, Massachusetts. Um, again, it's about an hour and a half drive or so uh, from here. Um, so we can be out at, at a moment's notice. I actually live west of Burlington in Worcester County, so I can uh, you know, if there are morning meetings, night meetings, 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 any time, we can, we can be here. We, uh, we go where the projects are. All right, so um, we have a list of prepared questions, and just looking over them, I think you've answered some of them mm -hmm. um, already, so I'm not going to read through them all, and I asked the committee to help me out. I didn't really want to read all of them, but I may end up doing so. Um, so you, you have some familiarity with their plans, as you, as you told us, and we know you've visited um, did you visit all the the pumps? Did you visit the old Deerfield plant as well? Or? No, we have not visited okay. the old Deerfield as yet. So, um, so do you? So, from what you know, what do you see at the, uh, are the general issues um, thus far? Well, I, you know, from what we've seen, mm -hmm. um, and I think it touches upon the conversation that was going on. You know, as we walked in as well, um, certainly the, the waste the South Deerfield wastewater treatment plant. Is definitely a facility that I think is going to be is going to generate a lot of recommended improvements uh, in first phases. Right, of course. You need, um, a, you need a screen. 
Mm -hmm. Right now, the screening How about situation that? is really bad. Yeah. Uh, your secondary clarifiers, which is a very important part of your process, mm -hmm. uh, needs needs some work. That has to have some redundancy. You have the ability, I think, to do that, but that that's really very important. And the other item that's on the top of my mind is the generator. Mm -hmm. You have to have a dependable emergency generator that starts automatically. Mm -hmm. you know, I mean, other, otherwise, it's, it's an excursion to the permit and you know, the state of the EPA. Mm -hmm. so, those are just a few of some of the Oh, I'm sure. Yeah. How much is your uh, in timeline anticipated for your initial uh, study assessment, and what are what is your anticipated cost for that? Uh, we haven't costed it out. That's a cost part is a, a good question. Uh, probably what we'd like to do is if you do select us, we'll sit down with you and we'll you know, we'll price up each of the phases, each of the tasks, and we'll sit down with you folks, and you know you can decide which tasks you want to do and which tasks you don't. Uh, I think probably the initial assessment, especially on the treatment plan five, would probably be two months, a couple months. Mm -hmm. And we can go as fast as or as slow as you know you like. So. I don't think we want to take any this. longer. Can I make a lot of that we've been through this. exercise as well? Really, you know, what comes into play is what is it exactly that you want to tackle right now? Mm -hmm. You know, with the collection system as an example. Right. Um, you know, if you know that there are areas in the collection system that aren't problematic, that we don't need to send crews out to do that, you know, the manhole inspections and the laser scanning, that's something, you know, we don't want to price up now if it's not going to be Im implemented right away, but it's, it's always available to be done. So a lot of these items that we've addressed can be undertaken fully all at once. They can be done piecemeal. Uh, what we'd like to work do is if selected, as Stephen mentioned, sit down with you, review all those um, scope items, and just you know decide exactly which is best to undertake at this time. Could I make a dis uh, suggestion? I'd, I personally would like to keep with this list of uh, questions that were put together, and other questions be saved to the end. Okay, um, but I see that question is part of one of these questions. So we're right, but I, I just um, soon do it in order the way you've. Okay. Um, so if I skip over one and you feel like we, they did not cover that, please interrupt me because I, there are some that I think they might have, but maybe we didn't all hear it the same way. So um, I will ask the next question about, um, I think maybe you covered this, uh, but benefits of having a comprehensive system assessment. I think you might have covered that, but if, if you want to say more and people would like to hear more about that. No. I, what it does is it just gives you a good comprehensive report that analyzes everything within the system and it's that it's that one document where all that information resides one of the things you would use that for is maybe uh, thinking ahead call it even a 20-year plan um, so you could you know if you had a comprehensive assessment including the collection system you could think ahead probably up to 20 years obviously there'll be more immediate needs but the complete assessment would allow you to take a long especially related to the collection system. And it's a tool that you can have in place in mm -hmm. developing capital improvement plans moving forward. Mm -hmm. So from what you know, what are the most important aspects of this project? I would say the condition assessment of the treatment plants would be my, would be my opinion. I think there are some very serious immediate needs that you really need to take care of as soon as possible. Uh, getting a handle on those, uh, deciding, you know, how to fund those improvements, seeing if there's some grants that are available, looking at the whole affordability issue, I think that some of the really I mean, if you had an unlimited budget, it would be easy, right? Mm -hmm. It'd be really easy. Mm -hmm. Or hard, <laughs> um, What part of this project poses the biggest challenge for your team? Do you all hear that? Funding? Pardon, no. Funding. Funding. Getting it funded. Yep. Yep. And what do you think pose the biggest challenges for the town? <laughs> <laughs> <Okay>. Funding. <laughs> funding. Funding. 
Hear that committee. part? <laughs> Getting the yes votes. <laughs> um, so, um, I think you answered, for my benefit, you answered question eight, unless yep. somebody would like mm -hmm. me to ask that. Nope. Um, no. I think you've also answered number nine, yep. um, but if you'd like to say more about how you would develop the budgets for the work, would you like more explanation about that, or are yeah. you set? No. Yes, no? no I'm Fine. Good. You're set? Yep. Okay, hearing no objections. <laughs> um, what is your ability to respond to emergencies should issues arise during the course of the assessment? We have some problem that needs to be tended to. What, how, what's your um, ability to respond to that? So it's, it's having staff who are local to this area mm -hmm. uh, that we have included in the project team. Um, first and foremost, um, our, our staff member in the Northampton office. Uh, again, with cell phones, instant messaging, all the technology, word can spread quickly. And you know, from where I live, I can be here in you know, a little over an hour as well. So. Mm -hmm. We can be responsive. And adjusting your plan accordingly to that, or or recommendations perhaps, or. Yep, definitely. Okay. definitely. Yeah. And again, um, it's, you know, having that that full doc, the full assessment document, you know, allows to allows us to know, you know, if something else in that plan, you know, that jumps up in priority, um, you know, we can work with you and. With, Capital improvement plans have been worked out. You know how can things maybe shift to to maintain the affordability um, for the long term, uh, but be, being able to be responsive enough to handle that uh, that emergency situation that arises. Um, how do you see future regulatory changes impacting treatment plants and collection <clears throat> systems? Question. So um, the permits that you have for the two treatment plants, your MPDS permits. Um, they will come due relatively soon, and um, you know, we're not sure what the EPA will do. Whether they'll give you a nitrogen limit, uh, I don't think the, I don't think you get a phosphorus limit. But but the regulatory concerns could uh, could really impact what you need to do, especially if you are if you're given a, a nutrient. Limit. Nitrogen and phosphorus are considered nutrients. Right now, you have a POD and total right. suspended solids. But we would want to get in touch with the EPA and try to get a sense from them as far as what's coming down the line. Mm -hmm. Good. You know, the yeah. challenge with that <laughs> is you know, there's obviously investments that need to be made into the plant to correct what's there currently. The, the regulatory changes add the potential for advanced treatment, other treatment technologies, which is further adds to the potential cost. Right. And one thing I'll just tag on to, one of the staff members that we do have, uh, he works with us on a part-time basis, is a former EPA uh, Region 1 head who was very involved with NIFTI's permit uh, um, writing. And he has, so after he retired with EPA, he joined Stantec. He's been a val valuable resource to us in he still maintains his contact uh, with his former EPA um, co-workers, but he's able to give us valuable insight on how EPA might, <coughs> might approach things, give us guidance on how we can work with EPA and communities on schedules that allow projects to be affordable for communities such as Deerfield. Go ahead. So does... Um does nitrogen mitigation require a different sort of infrastructure than what we have now? Uh, nitrogen is done biologically, so it would probably be a little bit more of what you currently have, and then a possible second step if it's a total nitrogen. The one thing I would say is uh, I'm, I'm working on a project right now for the town of Bridgewater, and they have a, they have a relatively small tree plant about the size of yours. And uh, they just got a new uh, NIPTES permit that had both a nitrogen and a phosphorus limit. So we helped them um, protest that permit. Uh, EPA issued a final permit and we helped them through their lawyers um, actually contest the permit legally. And what we were able to get for them was a 10-year implementation plan. 
which is a big help, right? Yes. So I mean, yes. that allows them to increase their rates gradually, put together a little pool of money, and then do you know a relatively large project and have some money set aside to do that. But at least it gives them some a planning period. Mm -hmm. uh, so we were able to help them. We couldn't get the limits changed. That that okay. was like off the table. But we did get them more time. And, and does the fact that we're we have a large farming community does that does that impact the uh, nitrogen and phosphorus? potential regulations? Um, that, the farming community piece is probably more related to the stormwater side. I don't think, you know, it's would be my guess. It's really more your, the, the, the water body that you discharge to is what, you know, EPA will look at. They look at dilution rates and they look at, you know, um, you know the end discharge point. Um, you know, I keep thinking of the the rollback of EPA regulations, which is what's going on right. now. So I'm going to at, put that out there and then ask this question. How should consideration of future regulatory change, whichever direction it might be going, be factored into today's decision-making process? So that really goes into the long-term and short-term recommendations, or immediate and long-term recommendations. A lot of people actually, in, in that work we did, um, that I did for the town of Bridgewater, we did talk about that. You know, are, are the EPA regulations being rolled back? And the answer to really is no. I mean, the, you know, the, there are the top level people at EPA that have, you know, they're looking at different things, but the local folks, they have set up a, a list of priorities that they're pushing ahead on. And um, so, you know, and, and they have a science, they call it, they have a scientifically based approach. And, um, you know, if you're going to get a, you're going to get a limit, you're going to get a limit. But, mm -hmm. but I will say in the work we did that the EPA was a lot more willing to extend our compliance period. How flexible are you to doing outside kind of out of the box kind of thing like um, supporting, you know, no-till um, farming so that we could lower our, um, probably our, what we're taking in? Um, again, I, I would say that's a little bit more on the stormwater side of. The but that stormwater. plays into the limits, right? N not really mm -hmm. on your on your wastewater treatment plant not point source okay. discharge. Okay. Um, how how would you determine affordability of projects for the town of Deerfield? So um, EPA has, uh, and we have a group of folks, actually uh, Carol was on our list of folks, we have a group of folks that all they do is affordability uh, studies. Uh, and there's some uh, EPA regulations on what's considered affordable. Mm -hmm. And it's based on uh, what they do is they look at, they take the census data uh, and basically determine sort of a average salary range of all the folks that are connected to the treatment plant. And then there's a percentage of, of that salary that's considered what would be reasonable for sewer rates. And above that, the EPA consider, considers it a burden and not really affordable. So we can go through that exercise. Um, again, uh, Carol's team is really good at manipulating the census data and mining all that information. Manipulating in a good way. No, not, I didn't mean that. <laughs> Just to <laughs> clarify, <laughs> to use your own. Get the information. Right. Yeah. Right, I know, I know that's. You know, I just wanted to clarify. I go on the website and I get, I get the mean salary for the state, and that's as far as I can go. So, uh, uh, this is I don't understand this. Um, so, if they determine something isn't affordable, what does that imply, or what? It, what's the consequence of that? Uh, the consequence is potentially uh, some um, grant funding, and also potentially in the case of Bridgewater, at a, that contributed <coughs> to the extended time for. Do you have a question related to that? Okay. I would like to follow up on that one. <clears throat> um, I know what the studies say the per capita is in Deerfield, and I find it very hard to believe. And I guess, I don't know how to ask this, but 
we have two zip codes, and I'm assuming they're being folded into one, and I would have to, from what I have seen, there is the per capita, there is a bit difference between the two zip codes. Yeah, so, it, yeah. Is that becoming a detriment so, to us? So we have, we have one zip code that has uh, a median income of 99000 and another zip code where most of the sewer users are that has a median income in the 40s. So, but the total yeah, town is lumped into, I believe, yeah, so around sixty-eight like or something like that. Or something. Is it up to seventy-six? So, uh, it, does that become a real detriment to applying, or can is there any way of appealing that? Uh, have you had experience of any way of appealing that to segregate um, two different plants, such as we have in this town? Yes, for this uh, work we did in Bridgewater. They're in a similar situation. A third, only a third of their town is sewered. So we were able to mine down into the uh, census data to basically get the mean salary of only the folks connected to the treatment plant. Oh, really? Yes. Oh, that's fantastic. And you can use that number in the in the affordability calculations. Ooh. Ooh. You're gonna make money. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. Uh -huh. Take that back. Um, what grant and loan programs? And other resources are you familiar with? Are you familiar with the town could utilize? Yes. Uh, so the one that most communities utilize is the SRF program uh, through the state. Uh, there are mass work grants that have. It's the sewer revolving fund program. Yeah, correct. Correct. Mm -hmm. Sewer revolving fund. Um, the Farmers Home Administration uh, is one that could potentially be used, and again, that's one in particular mm -hmm. that. Income. We'll look at segregated portions of communities for uh, for assistance. We had done that you know, years ago in the town of Wareham. Overall, the town didn't meet uh, their requirement, but by breaking it down into the different villages that comprise the community, funding was able to be targeted towards specific projects you know, within villages of that uh, single community. Uh, you know, so those are the, the common ones that, that are available. That communities will take advantage of. And MassWorks? MassWorks as well. Um, Does that have to be an economic development related you know, project? That's been, or, our, that's been my experience right. with it, certainly. Yes. Um, so. You might sneak something by. Yeah, it's, but, you know, it's, it's always worth a try. The only other one I would mention, that the, it, this is not a huge one, but we have been able to get energy rebates. So if we're going to replace a piece of equipment, you specify a premium efficiency motor or maybe you put it on a variable speed drive and you can get you can get uh, some rebate money back from the power companies. Um, and what is your availability to begin work? We are ready, willing and able at a moment's notice. So okay. we have uh, staff that that we've named have availability uh, to get started right away. Yeah. I, I heard when Keith asked the question about um, to you know, you don't couldn't give us any kind of a price right now, but you could sit down soon and in two months have something um, initial. Is that what you recall from your response to your question? That was the response I heard. Yeah, two okay. months and unspecified amount. Right. Um, before I ask this next question, I wanted to ask one about you. You overheard some of this meeting. You understand the community's <coughs> been through assessments before. Um, little or no improvements have been made. I'm not sure. I haven't been around that long to know mm -hmm. or hear. Um, given the, that lengthy and mu that funds have been expended before, a great deal of funds relative to the size of our community and all that, um, and probably heard a bit of the frustration with getting moving and getting some of those things we think are necessary to get done. Um, how would you work with us around around those issues? Um, how would you respond to my just putting that out there to you? You know, I, I think it all boils down to you know just continued communications throughout, mm -hmm. throughout the whole process. Uh, it's you know getting an understanding of where we are in our evaluations and our recommendations and what we're seeing as the priority projects and estimated costs for those. And it's you know it's understanding. Uh, the rate structure that the town has in place now and 
what position the town is in currently to, to undertake those projects. And it's, it's a collaborative, iterative issue, uh, process. Uh, it's, you know, we don't want to, you know, go back into our offices and, and go back and present this, this grandiose plan that, you know, that can't, can't, right. believe, can't, can't believe that is a surprise, first of all, and can't be implemented. So it's, well, those were magic words, I think. <laughs> um, so what is different about your project team from your competitors, and why should Deerfield select you to do this work? You know, I'd say there's a lot of qualified firms who can do this as well. Um, you know, I can only, this is the only company that I've been with. You know, I don't have the perspective of understanding how other, how other companies work, how other firms work. Um, you know, Putting clients first is, is, our, is our top priority. Well over 90% of all the work that we do is for municipalities. Um, the vast majority of that is within Massachusetts. It extends throughout New England as well. Um, so it's working on a daily basis with cities and towns like Deerfield is, is how we do most of our work. And that's, that's what we specialize in. Um, that's how we've built our business that's, that's been successful since certainly Stantec since the 1950s. And the firm I was previously since 1914. So, and again, mostly based in municipal uh, water, wastewater infrastructure projects. From a technical perspective, what happens is, if I have an electrical question, I go downstairs to, we have a six or seven person electrical group, I can get the answer I need right away. If there's a ventilation HVAC question, I can go to our mechanical guys and I can get an answer right away. If there's a process question that I can't handle, that we want to try to determine what type of treatment could you possibly get from your aeration tanks if we upgraded them. We have, uh, we have a person in our office who's got his doctorate's degree in biological treatment system model. I can get an answer from that. And if I have some just you know, like I talked about putting together a, an analysis of all the three, three years worth of data. We have interns in the office that do that very efficiently for our, team, for our communities. You know, I don't have a, you know, 35-year person sitting there trying to do a spreadsheet. I, you know, I have an intern from college who takes care of that. So we're large enough that we have those resources. Couple questions. I'd like to have uh, two questions, actually. Um, how many... Um, or what is your percentage of uh, towns that have approximately this size sewer plants that you've worked on? You know, is it, do you do mostly bigger ones? Do you do, I don't, can't think of much smaller ones, but you know, it, it, do you have a portfolio of, of towns this size that have the same typical problems funding on both ends? I do. I mean, that, my area of expertise is small. I mean, Stantec does design very large treatment plants. My area of expertise, I mean, I grew up in New England, so, uh, and I've stayed away from the MWRA uh, here <laughs> Island. So, so most of my plants are basically in the half to one and a half MGD range, which is the range that your plant is. And the other thing is, um, our town, which most small towns. Are, there's an awful lot of volunteer uh, uh, component in most anything. Uh, we don't work nine to five. A lot of our stuff is solved before six in the morning and after nine at night and anywhere in between. You said you're available, but are you available? And, and I don't mean you have to be available 24 seven, mm -hmm. but you know, if, if, if problems arise at uh, six o'clock in the morning, we're gonna have to wait till nine o'clock in the morning to get an answer and then have you correspond to somebody in some other office and by the time it then uh, we uh, you know we have any answers that we've wasted another day yeah i don't envision that at all i know so we have as an example i was um working on a sewer extension project down in the town of marshfield and it was about the same drive from my house to marshfield as it is from my house here and the town had a lot of local people involved, and they wanted to have progress meetings during construction every Thursday morning at 7 o'clock. I was always the first person 
at the progress meetings <laughs> in Marshfield. The people that live locally were all dragging in at you know five after, ten after, a quarter after. Um, it's not uncommon for us to attend night meetings. We do that many, many times. Uh, we understand that's the availability that uh, the volunteer people have for the most part, and that's that's part of our business. That's a norm for us. Uh, so that's that's not uncommon. And again, back to your question on the plant size as well. In the presentation that, that you'll have, one of the slides went through a listing of mm -hmm. the wastewater treatment plants that we've done in the New England area. And I think you see a lot of the flows that we have identified in that table will match the, the size of this community uh, pretty well. Some a little higher, some a little lower. I know we have just been asked to be involved with a project uh, in Rentham at a developmental center that where the population is has dramatically uh, decreased. They had a 400,000 gallon a day discharge. The plant is currently operating at a flow of 60,000 gallons a day. And we're working with them on advanced treatment that they need for copper removal with the district for the NIPTES permit that they have. So, it's, so we have a large plant experience, but <coughs> the number of large plants in the area are much, much fewer than you know, the small municipal wastewater treatment plants that are similar to Deerfields. I have a question. Uh, relative to the town of Bridgewater where you challenged the uh, environmental permit, yep. uh, the legal fees, uh, who incurred them and what was the cost to uh, fight that? So um, uh, the town paid the costs, obviously. I was not really privileged to what the total cost was, but I'm sure it was fairly significant. And I'm, I'm sure that's available. It's public record, probably. Yeah, pro probably. Yeah. I, I don't think, um, you know, I, I see Keith. Going, Why I, would you I, want to? I want to know what. Why would just you want an to idea. If we had to, if we had to challenge the permit, what, what you're talking about? Why would you challenge the permit for phosphorus and nitrogen removal? I in, mean, in, really. Brid in Bridgewater's case, yes, it was a three. It was a thirty million dollar upgrade yeah. that would be required to meet the permit that was originally established. They wanted it done in five years. 30 million in five years for almost any community is a lot of money. Yeah, yeah. So we were able to get it extended to 10 years. And, you know, maybe they spent $50,000 getting that, That's, you know, in legal yeah. fees, but for them it was worth it. That was my question. Yeah. So yeah, having it stretched out is a good thing, but, you know, the permit is there for a reason. It's, oh, yeah. yeah. Right. Right, the permit's there for a reason. For the sure. environment counts. Yep. Oh, yeah. It's not just dollars. Yeah, actually, like to, to, think. Be, to be straight up, what we did in that 10 year period is we broke the $30 million project into two phases. Yeah. First phase, we're going to do nitrogen removal for about $10 million, And then the second phase, we're going to do phosphorus removal. Phosphorus removal. So we were able to break it up for them. We just, we just made it a, a lot better for the time. Um, Thank you. I can't. I, I kind of know the answer to this without being able to explain it really well, so that's why I'm going to ask this question. I think in some ways, and what I've heard here and earlier meetings, is we're sort of chomping at the bit to do some things that we've identified. Mm -hmm. How might that happen in the process of doing this as a study and maybe doing some design and maybe doing some implementation? Mm -hmm. how, how could that work? Great question. Thank you. Know, like, <laughs> if we want to do the clarifying We've got to get moving. Well, on. Yeah, you know, and if there are things that, you know, that through this the beginning phases of this analysis, things that immediately bubble up to the top. Good then, metaphor. <laughs> yeah, let's, let's undertake that. Right. You know, and we've got, and we have the staff to transition from the report phase right into final design as well. So we have so that, you know, the experience getting out a good answer. In, into the trust for uh -huh. uh, the SRF applications. To point now, the majority of projects that are submitted for uh, the SRF funding, uh, and I'll usually make the intended use plan mm -hmm. with the communities provide the funding for it in the end. So. On the affordability issue, um, I would assume, but I'll ask anyway, has your company done any studies to create an ERD or ERU uh, system for, uh, uh, for evaluating a uh, in-town uh, 
funding for these plants equal residential units or um, basically the, the Marshfield project uh, was set up on do you so you have in-house staff that can develop a uh, ERU funding uh, yeah, model as well the group that Steve mentioned uh, would play a key role in that as well so the Marshfield project the intent of that was to provide sewer service to the downtown area there were a number of residential areas that benefited from that sewer extension project as well. The town made the decision the town as a whole was going to benefit by having the downtown sewer, so a portion of the project was paid on the, on the tax base. The remainder was covered by assessment or betterment charges to, um, to those that were bettered by the project. And the question then came, how do you determine how much a private homeowner pays in comparison to this business downtown that's going to generate more flow? And we then worked with the town to develop an equivalent home basis uh, for the downtown businesses to then generate the total number of equivalent units that were connecting to the sewer system. Homeowners paid one, and then the businesses paid a multiple of that depending on flow component that they were contributing to the sewer that was being provided. That's on our minds. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, Very much so. <laughs> yeah, hel helping to figure out funding and uh, in terms of uh, who and how and what people pay in this community in would be very helpful. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, is it okay for of course. President? Yeah, Kassel, sure, right? please. Um, with, if you're chosen to do this project, um, will the town be required to sign your contract? Or will they be able to negotiate a contract with you based on our contract? So we have standard contracts. Uh, we certainly can offer them. You know, the town has standard contracts. We have um, in-house yeah. uh, legal people that will take a look through it. Um, may offer comments, suggested modifications. Um, I don't see that coming to agreement on, on a contract is gonna be a major issue. You know, where, do you have a uh, particular? We know that there are some clients that have you know, particular contracts that they yeah, want to we use and, are, and we're flexible in that regard. Um, if you're comfortable with the standards that we have, then we can move forward readily with that as well. Oh, just wondering if you have a particular issue in a contract well, that you uh, think the town should uh, yeah. an engineer's contract will protect the engineer a town's contract yeah. will protect the town yeah we we tr you traditionally use ours and uh, in our my experience and then, but the, the yeah. engineer will then want to incorporate his protection right. into our contract and also um the engineer will include um a fee schedule for any emergency um all of the all the emergency services all the what proposed in the scope of services. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. just be aware that you could receive a bill for every time you give them a call, you come out and look at something that's not part of the mm -hmm. Good point. <laughs> any anybody have any other questions, Keith? I don't have any questions. I'm really wanting to make comments, but I'm not. Good. So <laughs> We can t you can tell me later. Well, uh, one thing I would like to say. Uh -oh. <laughs> I, would like to say I can't help it. I have to say it. Much of what you presented tonight as the assessment phase, anyway, we've already paid for once with Weston and Sampson. I mean, we went through this whole thing, and I gave them seven years worth of data, not three. Um, and because the representative that was working with us at the time came up with this master plan that was going to cost a lot of money, that scared everybody and created the committee that we're now here with. Uh, really, they were willing to sco uh, size that back down to whatever we want. You know, uh, so if we decided we didn't want to regionalize, fine. Um, if we wanted to piecemeal it, fine. But what they wanted was a fee for refiguring out the hydraulics and what would be involved in, in reconfiguring for a much smaller scenario, mm -hmm. for a less of a price tag. <clears throat> and if I recall, uh, it was Mr. Camosa that thought that that was just ridiculous and too expensive, 
and we started this whole process nearly a year ago. It's just taken almost another year to come to have you come and present. And your, your format here is almost exactly what they have already done that we've already paid for. So we, we responded to this. Okay. Okay. Right. I understand what you're talking about. I have no issue yeah. with Stantec. In yeah, fact, yeah. I'm welcoming anybody who wants to get sure. started yep. at this point. But what I'm not understanding, I guess, is why the town on one hand seems to be very concerned about costs and yet we're spending, duplicating efforts, spending money and more money getting assessments done endlessly instead of actually getting to work fixing anything. I just... Well, let me ask a question that might tie that up, it. which is how much can we, you extrapolate from what we've done and not reinvent the wheel? Right. Do, you, do you imagine that? And can you speak to that and maybe and it, adding your you know, updated information so that we're not paying for something to be duplicated but built upon? But the process they need to do as a brand new engineering firm, they need all that baseline information in order to make a qualified assessment of what really needs to be done, which is what you're agreeing to pay them to do. Well, let's but we're just going around in circles here. It's like we're all, we've already done this with Wes and Sampson, and they've also done our 20 year study in 1999 that we did nothing on for 20 years. That just sat there in a drawer. Nobody did anything with it. And then when I took over, I provided the town with a material condition of both plants a very detailed one, which was largely ignored. And then um, <laughs> we started the whole thing with, uh, let's get a professional assessment done. So Weston and Samson came back and did that. And they were looking really long-term at, at saving the town the most money over the longest haul of anybody. And sure, it was a grandiose thing and it didn't need to happen that way, but I think it would have overall probably cost a lot less money to have them scale it back and redo the blue blueprints rather than start from scratch all over well, again. I, I just asked them later. if they would be starting from scratch. So if you could answer that. Thank you, Carolyn, the chair, so. <laughs> no, no, one of the very fine. first tasks we talked about in the scope of work is to basically take all the information that's been developed so far and go through, and go through it and figure out what's good and what isn't good and what can be used and what couldn't be used. Um, if I can just speak frankly, Please. when we were here in September, we provided a letter proposal to the town that basically took a little different approach than what was asked for here. Mm -hmm. we, took a, a, we took a more immediate approach to say, okay, here's a list of eight things that need to, needed to be addressed right away and let's just figure out how we're going to do those, and let's do the design. Yeah. So I, I understand that that's what we propose, but, th but this is what we got. And, and this is not necessarily bad. It's, it's stepping back, and it's like, we want to know the, is the condition of our entire system before we start spending money. I, am, I totally get it. I just don't know why the town wants to pay so, who knows how much money again to do the same thing all over We again. would take the lead from this committee if you want to pick four or five things that you know need to be done right away, we can come out, look at it, and we can do the design work and get it put out to bid right away. Yeah. We can certainly do that, but. Skip. Yeah, this is an inappropriate time to be addressing that issue. If you get a question about the procedure that follows, you need to talk to the town administrator and not take up everybody else's time. Okay, thanks for your opinion. You're welcome to it. Well, um, thank We're gonna, you. We yeah. need to wrap up, but um, thank you for bringing that letter up. Sure. Um, yep. I believe the thank committee you. has that letter. Yes. Yep. yes. So we'll, it's there. It's there. Yep. We're, we're still willing to okay. do that. We're still willing to take that approach. Wonderful. We could do that piece, and then once that's done and some of these immediate needs get done, we could, we could go into the more of a longer, longer view. Okay. Right. And, right. Perhaps some of the procedural steps you mentioned in there would be integrated into addressing this in terms of how you communicate and work with the town. And sure, stuff like absolutely. That. Yes. Are there absolutely. any other questions? We have another consultant. I see the doors moving out there. Um, thank you so much yeah. for coming. Thank you. I want, I want you to know I really appreciate it.
can see from the side. Yeah, can you get a I got a question for you. Not for the mic. Manhole picture. How much infiltration of water is there? That's why they don't make covers like that. Absolutely. We didn't have any like that in town. No, that's not from the state. I just figured I would bring you that. No? That's common problem. I appreciate your uh, coming out. What whereabouts are you? So I live in South Burrow. South And if you just the other side of the street. Yeah. I, have, I haven't been to South Burrow. I've been in North. Okay. So where are we responding? The chair of high school. I understand. I understand. I understand. You have a mall there. I'm going to go to the North Burrow. The North Burrow. I just built a recently. Yeah. But all the rest. It's. I couldn't help but I had to say that. Yeah. Did some work done. Yeah, yeah. 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 it's a lot of this stuff that they did. Because that's exactly what happened. Mm -hmm. He did a very good job. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. No, he's got to be seen. Okay, so I do that. All right, I'll tell you what's going on. Okay. Oh, oh, bombs. Yeah. Yeah. Like we yeah. Yeah. Well, it's not being ignored. I've got it right yeah. here. Okay. Yeah. I think there's another one up on the floor. Yeah, there is. And I think that's what it's called. I still want to tell you. I have no idea. Last I knew, they were trying to get before. Uh, we're not as bad. Pricing to buy when you need a property cost. I don't turn by it for next to nothing. They're trying to buy the thing for unneeded property behind the current tower. And I thought they wanted to get it for next to nothing. And I said that should not be done. I agree with you. Antic, I don't remember seeing that letter. I don't know why. I don't know that. Down to the south. They're going to take the middle of the men's room. I am waiting. They're going to look now to help. I already looked through all this stuff today, and I don't remember seeing that. I would be late. Do you have a copy of that? The dairy. The letter that they wrote. Earlier, the seven things they pointed out. I think that's exactly what I'll do. I don't know where we are. I'll see if I can find it. I think I've got it. I'll have to. I'll have to go through here. I think you had a price on it about thirty-eight thousand dollars. By the way, did you guess one? I couldn't read its name on that sign. It's like damn, getting old. I know. I know. I just found out. That's why I wanted it because I stopped there. You ready to guess one? I said, "For what?" They told me this. I'm going to get this November. Yeah, I've got oh, it. Oh, no, I don't. A week ago. You were dead as I am then. And what happened was, I said, we were told that oh, he's was got it. set up for a year and a half. So That's right. We could make copies for everybody. I didn't know they gave them maybe. I just thought it was like a... Well, what they do is they make it. It's usually five minutes. They make a formal committee appointment. The thing is that it usually lasts for a certain period of time. And this is what it's always looking at. We're going to have a final report by the summer of last year. Usually, I have a question or something as far as being able to. You know, what, you, know what, you know what made me think about that? Mm -hmm. Because and we know we've got to go to have a good suggestion. Yes, that's the thing. Okay, so we fix that. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to yeah. yeah. say that. Dear Phil, do you want to say that? Yeah, no, no, you were well. You were well, everybody got the point. But that is true. So we try to do that and I'll disable that one. But that's why you don't have. Two, uh, two operations on that. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. We have a one because one throws up out of the So I think what we should do is we'll just find a solution for it and let's get the damage in the land. Carolyn, I do have it. Oh, no. Um, we got it from right. Jack. Okay. And Trevor's okay. photocopy. It's because of old gear. You know, so. And if you need emergency, so, home, oh, yeah. we'll go to town meeting. That's going to be a huge benefit. Well, that could, that could be tremendous could be if, if we can get. If nothing else. If hey, we, we, we can get that zip code broke out. That could be a huge thing. But, you know, as far as a four year building. The zip code, don't forget, this zip code includes part of Wakeland. 
So if they can exclude that part of weight weight. Well, that's true, too. That's true, too. I forgot about weight weight, but uh, yes. Thank you. You know, but uh, that, that could make a huge impact. Uh, okay. I, thank you. I do have this. That could... That could be a huge impact as far as what they call well, I'm affordability. Gonna, I'm, I'm, well, Wheatley might drag us down and make it better. <laughs> no, actually, per, Wheatley's no. per capita is higher than ours. It yes, it is. What happens so is, that's is that why I, I, up I started before and then we got off. No, but what we want to do is we want to pull it out from the Bottom line is, is well, yeah, the we'll get the nails to the schools. <clears throat> I don't know. Well, I, I, it's, I don't know. Fine. All I, mean, I know was, was all I know was enough to ask the question. You know, I didn't know about some of this other stuff, but I know there is a difference in you getting sucked in. The center south deer field is not healthy. Okay. I know because I went to only the people that live on it. When we were doing, when we were doing, when we were proposing senior housing, are you? Are you? Good. Sure, we have a habit of doing our taxes. When your taxes are too high, you can get a thousand dollars off your taxes. Is it just because of your age? No, because of income. We only get one third vote. And when that was question was asked right up front, he said. Whatever the thing comes mm. out, we want our fair vote, that's all. And they turned around and gave it away anyway. They didn't listen to the last people. That's why I'm asking a lot in there. I offer you mine, but I can't. Yeah. <laughs> I can't I the phone phone yeah, all that stuff's done. <laughs> It's on a button, Thank right? You. <laughs> it's on a button. Thank you. <laughs> it's on a button. You got to click. You just got to remember which button. If she follows me, my No, no. what we did was as we kept um, talking, <laughs> we can't make decisions without having facts and figures. But we've already had the facts and figures three times over the last. Yeah, we decided we need I think that I think that committee is a whole. Yes. I think so. I was just seeing if you can put the clicker in there. Huh? Is this, is this your PowerPoint in this book? Yeah, is that okay to hand that off? That's great. Thank you. For those of us who can't see the screen. <laughs> so we'll wait till he gets back before we begin. Okay. You tell us when you're kind of ready. We're ready. Ready. Bob. No, we're waiting for one of their team members. Oh. To we're still waiting on one. Who's showing pictures of your bank? Oh, I'm showing. Do his prints. Oh, nice. I knew it. I, I knew yeah, it. Bob. Yes. Oh, it's he. The, wow. Is that the third? You didn't tell me. That. Another one, huh? That's quadruple decker. <laughs> I have to see the picture. I'll show it to you. You right. better. Makes you feel old there. Right? Yeah. I've known them all. Yeah. <clears throat> Good thing, though. Are you going to Clever meeting next week? Yeah, I don't think John that. John I need a ride. Oh. I don't want to drive in the dark. Are you going up to roll, roll on Saturday? Okay. Saturday? Okay. Um, so, anything wrong? So. Um, we've structured this. I think I've discussed this with you. Um, presentation, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, and then we have questions to ask yeah. you. I'd um, like to ask, I'll reverse it this time, have the folks around the table introduce themselves and then have you introduce yourself. Thank you. 
I'm Bob Decker. I'm the Deerfield uh, Sewer Study Committee. John Pachark, Sewer Study Committee. John Pareski, Sewer Study Committee. Keith Mellon, Chief Operator. Jeff Upton, Sewer Study. Bruce St. Peter, Sewer Study. Kip Camosa, Selectman. Carolyn Ness, Selectman. Trevor McDaniel, Selectman. Wendy Foxman, Town Administrator. Jack Davey, Sewer Study. All right, I'm uh, Dave Prickett for DPC Engineering. Anthony Smart with DPC. And James Rivers with DPC. All right, so is this being televised at the same yes. time too? Yes. Okay. Yep. So is it okay to wander with the, sure. the sound? I'm sure, we'll, we'll, hear from our, we'll hear from the studio if there's okay. a problem. Okay. Okay. Whatever it is. Uh, I usually don't have, I usually no, have a coaching voice oh. anyway. So they can so see that. Yeah. Yeah. I can see that. that. Especially you, you have this. You can tell me to tie it down. I think you can see that. No, you have to pick it up for Bob. So this is what they're presenting. Yeah, each of you has a copy of the, the presentation, so if you'd like to take notes. Um, you know, we generally try to be pretty informal when we have these uh, interviews and discussions. So certainly if you do have questions, they're in, we're fine with you asking them. Um, we've got the slides to kind of remind us while we're going. I, whatever format you're comfortable with, but, you know, we like the roundtable kind of discussion. So uh, with that, I'll let you decide if you want to interject along the way. So. We've introduced the project team. Uh, tonight we'll go over just a little bit about our firm. Uh, some of you know us from past projects. We'll talk a little bit about us individually and what talents we think we bring to the town of Deerfield. Talk a little bit about how we think we understand uh, a good chunk of your infrastructure, our approach to this particular project, um, some of the things that we think differentiate us from the competition, and then we'll follow things up with the question and discussion, and that may be interactive for us. So. So a little bit about us, DPC Engineering. Um, I started DPC four years ago. I did 20 years of the big firm stuff. Um, not that those experiences weren't good, um, but I saw, you know, living in, in Western Mass that the business was changing. Um, there were more and more unfunded mandates. Um, it was very challenging for my clients when I was at the big firms to be able to afford projects. And I saw an opportunity to do something I really wanted to do in life, which was start my own company but also be able to deliver services to clients that I've been working with for a long time for a fraction of the price. And it certainly has resonated as we've grown significantly. We're up to seven people now, four years in. Um, this is our team that we bring tonight, though. These are the people that will be working on the project. Um, and hopefully you kind of know some of us are ready. Um, we like to emphasize progressive solutions. And by that, what do I mean? Well, a big chunk of it's the financial end. So. What you learn when you're doing engineering is that you can come up with great ideas and with operators um, and, and, and town managers and, and come up with a great plan. But if you can't afford them, it was all for naught. So you really have to integrate the finance early in the project. Um, otherwise, you're going to end up with a solution that's not a solution at all. So it's very important. Some of the towns that we work with right now and we have worked for that are similar in size and kind of scope to Deerfield, uh, Hatfield and Northfield, we're just finishing up wastewater management plans for those two communities and they kind of sandwich in here in the region. Great Barrington, we've worked on a number of projects, uh, both Tony, myself, and James over the last 10 years uh, with them. And they've got a similarly sized treatment plant as you do. Uh, Lee and Lennox are both similar comps in terms of being about the same size communities. Some of these communities have the interesting dynamics that Deerfield does too with the whole, you know, uh, the schools and the, the, the commerce and other things being a regional attraction. Um, and that can be both a challenge and an opportunity as we've talked a little bit in the past. And uh, Town of Orange is somebody that we, Tony and I have been working with for the past few years. So um, I'm not going to get into the list of all of our clients right now in Western Mass, but we think, you know, four years in we have a really strong track record of not only doing work for these communities but doing repeat projects. Uh, they keep hiring us, and we have uh, we want to build long-standing relationships uh, with both these communities and with you uh, because we live here. And if we don't do a good job, one thing we've learned is bad news travels fast in Western Mass. So uh, we have to be here for our clients and continue to serve them well. We have done quite a few projects uh, in Deerfield over the past few years, and some of that is a hybrid between things that I've done with you uh, through DPC and also things that Tony has done uh, with his previous employer. Uh, we did a rate study back in 2016. Uh, we'll come back to that one tonight because that one kind of hit a, a pause, if you will. Uh, but we can talk about, I was pleasantly surprised to see that many of the things that came up in that project, you've implemented in the last two years. You've done a very nice job uh, building up your wastewater assets to get to that point. We've done some funding applications. Uh, more recently, we've helped you with the state IR requirements, which James, which James will talk about uh, briefly in the coming slides. 
Um, we did a, a little rate study update um, last fall uh, when you were looking at potentially uh, using different uh, rate structures for residential, commercial, and institutional things. Um, and then we helped take a look at your captain late for a pump station. You know, one thing we pride ourselves in is that almost every time we've been coming through Deerfield for other clients for meetings, we'll call and ask if we could stop by and see if there's anything you may need help with. Some of these projects we've done as a courtesy for Deerfield, and we, we hope that that helps to build our relationship with you uh, in the future. Our project team, we've hit on it. We know that you have a lot of moving parts on your side, too. You, you have the operations side. You have the, the town staff side. I know Kevin's not here this evening. I guess he's getting better over an illness. But, um, we understand that you've put together a structure to allow you to look at your wastewater, both your collection system and your treatment plant, and have those different departments and committees and boards help put a plan together that works for the, the citizens and the ratepayers. Um, we don't really like to talk about ourselves individually. It's kind of embarrassing, but one of the things you asked for in your, in your solicitation was some resumes for key staff. So I'm gonna very quickly kind of gloss over these and maybe touch on one of the projects for each of the three of us that we think it might be most pertinent to Deerfield. And these will be here if you'd like to come back and reference them. So one of the things that, that, that we've done recently that we thought was pretty cool, I live in Longmeadow. Um, for Longmeadow, we're putting together an asset management plan for the collection system. Now Longmeadow doesn't have their own treatment plant. They discharge over to Springfield. Um, but they have a pretty old system. We got a lot of clay pipes. And anytime you have an asset that's, that's below the ground, it's out of sight, out of mind. So one of the things we're working with Longmeadow as a hybrid for the state IR requirements, but also to give them a plan for the next 10 to 15 years, is to help them score all of their pipes that are under the ground, the manholes and the pipes, and give them basically a spreadsheet model that they can sort. And each year as they have money, and it tends to vary as any community does. Sometimes you have a little bit better money in one year, and the next year you might not have any. But it gives you a roadmap to help justify with the public when you ask for money. You can say, this is exactly what we're going to spend it on. And it's common to use it on roads with the Chapter 90 money, but oftentimes with water and sewer, um, it's something that, that's just kind of out of sight, out of mind. Uh, one, of the, one of the things that, that, that Tony's done a really good job on is for the town of Orange, they started with the wastewater capital plan to upgrade their treatment plant at $22 million three years ago. Now, Orange is a great community with hardworking citizens, but Orange is in some tough economic times. They are really struggling. Um, I've literally been at rate setting meetings where people have literally cried and said that they had to resort to eating like cat food, dog food, and it literally tears you apart. So immediately when we started with Orange, Tony had a great idea. He said, we have to just basically start from scratch and what are the things that are most important? Now, Orange has got a 45-year-old treatment plant. It sounds similar to a lot of the treatment plants that we work with, but we're down to about a $12 million capital plan right now. It doesn't address 100% of the things that they wanted to do, but it addresses 100% of the things that they need to do today to stay in survival mode, meet their permit, and do the best they can with renewal. And lastly, for James, um, James is our, he's our director of field work. Um, you may have seen him driving you know, in town or one of the neighboring communities in his vehicle. James is in charge of all our collection system flow monitoring. He does our sonar testing, manhole inspections. Um, we have our own in-house fleet of all of this equipment. We don't like to sub that out. That was one of the things I hated to do when I worked with the big firms. I didn't like to pay other firms and all their overhead to take things. We literally have invested over $250,000 in the last four years in equipment for collection systems. And it's allowed us to offer better pricing to our to our clients. So next. So with that, uh, James, I'll take over. No, sure. So I'm just going to give you a brief uh, collection system overview. Um, you know, this is something I have a lot of experience with in your town. Um, you know, it's a unique, unique system. You've got the two areas, Old Deerfield up north and South Deerfield. Um, it's about 60 miles of sewer altogether, and uh, you have four miles of north and 12 in South Deerfield, and about 330 manholes. I personally have been to every single one of these manholes. We GPS them about two years ago to put together a mapping system to keep track, track of things. And uh, you also have your pump station, just the one in town, Captain Lathra, um, which is unique you know, for such a large system to only have the one station to maintain. Um, currently we're working on uh, phase one state II requirements. The state of Massachusetts um, published a requirement as part of their um, general statutes that basically required any municipality that has a collection system to do an II study. Um, so it's a two-part study. Right now we're in phase one, 
which is the collection system flow modeling. And the way we did this is we broke up the town into 10 sub areas. And we've got three in Old Deerfield and seven in South Deerfield. Um, as you can see, South Deerfield is shown here. And uh, basically what we're looking for is the ability to quantify the amount of II that's coming into the collection system. And, you know, as you can see, we put them throughout all the town. One's actually right across the street if you walk out today. There's a manhole right there. There's a flow meter right in there. It's a uh, sub area 10 right here. This is where we are. Um, so we're in the process of doing that. And with that is coming in uh, phase two. And phase two, where phase one is looking to quantify the amount of infiltration, phase two is more about uh, scoring the assets, as Dave said, the asset management plan. So this will involve going out, opening every single manhole, the ones that we have already GPS located, you know, looking at all the different um, attributes within the manholes and then looking for any defects, any issues that may arise within the manholes, and also doing sonar testing of all the pipe segments. Um, the sonar testing works, we've got a transmitter and a receiver that we put on the upstream and the downstream manhole, and it sends a signal through the pipe and it gives us a score of zero through 10 of the grade of that pipe. And uh, it's, a, it's a real economic, an economical way of you know, looking at the collection system without having to do the CCTV work. Um, basically, this eliminates areas so that you can later then go do the CCTV work as needed. Um, and this is giving us the framework um, to potentially put together the asset management plan. And all this is involved in requirements, the reporting that will happen uh, that's going to match DEP. And lastly, I yeah, was touched upon the asset management plan. Um, basically, it's, it's a database, and it gives a score to every single piece um, and asset within your collection system. So each manhole, you know, you have prioritized, it might be this one scored at, you know, 1.12, the next one scored at 1.4, that way as funds become available as part of a capital uh, implementation plan that you can evaluate as the funds are there to decide um, where the priorities need to be. I'm going to briefly talk about your uh, treatment facilities for a, for a small com community having two treatment can, facilities. Excuse me, can you just speak a little bit louder because you're on TV. <laughs> so I'm going to briefly talk about your two treatment facilities. Uh, for a small community, you're in a unique situation where you have basically two separate districts with two treatment facilities. Obviously, one serves the South Deerfield and one serves the Old Deerfield. Uh, South Deerfield plant was built in 1970. You had minor upgrades in 1982 and 1987. It's got a surface water discharge to the Connecticut River. The plant was originally designed for a million gallons a day of capacity, and because of the old cane pickle uh, facility, they actually rescinded 150,000 gallons a day of capacity due to the high strength load. So the plant currently is permitted for uh, 850,000 gallons a day. Current average daily flow is about a half a million gallons a day. Um, I've been working with Keith at some of these facilities for a while, and I do have to say- Can I make one comment? Sure. Capacity, design one point zero million gallons per day. I've been saying that for at least 15 years, and the permit was 0.85, which you're right, and it was because Oxford Pickle, and you're right, and most people don't know that. So you're right. <laughs> <laughs> you do good so far. You do good so far. Actually, John, you're right. You're right. <laughs> no, to be honest, that was fact. I was pretty I sure read he the was going to be wrong when you first started talking. <laughs> no. Okay. He's actually the one who told me that. That's, to be honest, that's uh, where I got that. But yeah, I know this facility uh, pretty well. Thank you. <clears throat> Old Deerfield facility, constructed in 1972. No upgrades uh, since. Again, another surface water discharge to the Connecticut River. 250,000 gallons per day permit and design capacity. It's currently doing about 80,000 gallons a day, and it primarily services the schools. When the school's in, the flow's high. When the school's out, there's almost no flow to the, to the system. <clears throat> One of the things that's unique is that both facilities are in similar situations. You have outdated equipment and technology. They both run a conventional activated sludge process, which is just treatment lingo, uh, which a lot of plants throughout the country do. There's safety concerns at both. Again, they're from the 1970s. You've got electrical issues where you've got old electrical equipment. The equipment's not energy efficient. Uh, there's structural integrity concerns with the concrete. Again, they're 50 years old. And then uh, two of the things that are more unique is uh, South Deerfield has a grease management issue, which you can actually see in the bottom uh, photo over here. That's grease built up inside the clarifier, which I believe partially contributed to some of the issues you had with, with that clarifier. 
And then flooding concerns are an issue up at uh, Old Deerfield. And if you look at the photo in the upper right corner, you can actually see the line where Hurricane, Hurricane Irene came up uh, to the facility. Again, just to kind of touch on a couple of the issues. Uh, ragging, these are photos of uh, the staff uh, de-ragging an aeration uh, piece of aeration equipment and uh, hauling them off. It's a very labor-intensive uh, process. And as you don't have a ton of staff for these facilities, uh, it, it, can be, it can be challenging. Again, speaking on the structural concerns, a life expectancy of concrete tanks is generally 50 to 75 years, but like any, I mean, think about the, some of the bridges in New York City. They were built in the 1800s. They do the maintenance and the, build, the bridges still stay. Uh, so it just kind of shows you the tanks are starting to show their age. So our kind of, our approach to the treatment facilities is, to, to simplify it, it's built for what you know and now Plan for the future, but not the what if. And what that means is the plants don't have capacity issues. So you don't have to do a capacity expansion. Nitrogen's the big boogeyman in the Connecticut River, but nitrogen per if you got if you got a change in your nitrogen permit, you're gonna get five years to implement it. It's most likely ten years away. That puts us fifteen years out. Technology can completely change and why spend millions of dollars on something that may never come? They may go after Springfield and Northampton and the big fish and not the small fish. So know what you, know, have a plan, but build what you need. So our approach is renew your existing infrastructure. So you have old concrete tanks. The asset's already in the ground. It's cheaper to build, it's cheaper to repair an existing tank than to build new ones, especially with the, the soil conditions um, in town. Maximize your existing investment, meaning reuse what you can, but also provide redundancy, but also provide the operators the flexibility. Keith is a very sharp operator. He's run some intense systems down in the Chesapeake Bay where they have limits of technology treatment. And he, with the proper flexibility, he, he can change the process and how the plant works. Update your technology, and then again, improve operational flexibility, but one of the big things is capital versus operational costs. There are some items where, say, say your sludge budget's 100 grand. You put in a piece of sludge technology where, say, the debt service on that technology is, say, 50 grand. Your budget just comes down by 70 grand because of the way it changes the sludge. You have it now in net positive. So there are things like that, where there are things where you spend a little bit of money, but your return on investment is eight years, nine years, and it saves in the long run. One of the other things to consider too, and in, in, in today's challenging times with capital, is again, you're in a unique situation, you have two treatment plants. One of the things to look at and look at the cost impacts is possibly shutting down the old Deerfield plant and consolidating it in the South Deerfield plant. There's not a capacity issue right now at either facility, so it's, you're not looking at a, you wouldn't be looking at a major expansion, it's just a long way to get there, about four and a half miles. But when you think about it, you would be consolidating operations from two treatment plants to one, there's a cost savings there, economies of scale. You'd be consolidating, you'd be reducing your operation costs, again, two to one. Now, again, there are higher capital costs for some of these things. But also, if you did that, there's a possibility to do some economic development along Route 5. And in some of the work that Dave's done for the town of Hadfield, about 15 years ago, they sewered right off the exit where the mass, uh, mass highway is. It's taken about 15 years, but that area is now a vibrant commercial development area for the town of Hadfield. So there's a, there could be a possible benefit, not only the tax base from increased tax revenue, but also the sewer users as well. Okay, you can just stay there, James. He's doing a good job. So we talked a little bit about us, your collection system, and your treatment plants. And now really what we want to do is talk about how we're going to tie this together. So on the financial side, we look back at what you've done the last two years, actually the last five years. So for fiscal 18, the current fiscal year we're in that ends in June, you've got a budget of just under $750,000. Um, you've got just under 900 sewer customers. Um, the sewer customers have been relatively flat for the past five years of note in terms of a number of new customers. You have a current rate of $10 per 1,000 gallons. 
You have a fixed annual charge of 100 and a minimum bill of 180, and you've made adjustments to those the last two years, which is great because it helps anything at the law end. Um, you've got an average residential cost right now for sewer, just under $700. So that compares with the state. The state average is just under $800 per year right now. So you've done a really good job in the last five years of bringing your, your costs up. Now, I'm sure that that has, has met its challenges as you've done that with residents, and it's never popular. Um, but it is important, and some of the things that we've talked about in the past is when you're judged on future grant applications, one of the criteria to use in underwriting is what is your annual sewer cost per home as a percentage of your, your median household income? And if you're under 1%, which you were five years ago, five years ago you were, I think, like $425 per year per household, um, it makes it really hard to get grant funds. One thing you know for sure moving forward is you have some level of significant capital you know, you have exposure, you have risk, you have capital needs for the wastewater system, and anything you can get for grants is going to significantly offset what your ratepayers or taxpayers will end up paying, depending on how you fund it. Over the last five years, so looking backwards, you've averaged a 13% rate increase per year. Now, it wasn't always each year linear. You know, some years you had relatively flat, and other years you had sharp increases. But that's important because we kind of look forward in terms of looking back. Your foundation is now set. You've done a really good job getting things up to where they need to be. So our financial approach, and I talked at the beginning of the presentation, is that if you do the engineering first in a vacuum, you're never going to come out to a point where you have a project that makes sense. Three years ago, when we started the sewer rate study, we were told that you had a capital plan of between $25 and $30 million between the treatment plants and the collection system. At the time, I didn't know enough about what was going on in your collection system or treatment plant, but we were trying to simulate those rates in the rate model. And for those of you that were in those discussions, you were looking at double or tripling your sewer rates in order to accommodate that project. Um, that's why that project hit a wall at the time. But again, you did many of the things that we talked about. So if we use what you've done in the last five years to simulate what might happen in the future, it helps us understand what sort of wastewater capital you might be able to afford. And as you're going through the process of the asset management plan and coming up with what the capital needs are, you've got a sense as to what you can afford. And that's pretty important because you can kind of stop when you get to that point. So just in terms, this is just, this again, this is a quick kind of grab at, at doing a snapshot here. But if you look at potential annual increases per year to your sewer rates, and you have a low, a medium, and a high, and we just arbitrarily said 3% is basically a no action. It's inflation. Mm -hmm. So if you start at 3%, and you go to the high end, which, is, which would be, in theory, what you did in the last five years, 13% per year, we split the difference in the middle at 8%. Okay? The next thing you look about, and one of the things I always preach is the number one solution to money problems for utilities is the denominator. If you can grow customers, you don't have a problem. This is why when you go to Nashville or down in Florida and some of the places Tony's had experience with, they build new systems every year. It's because they have thousands of new customers coming into the system. That is the solution to all of our problems. But it's not happening in Western Mass. So if we just assume conservatively that you either have none, or best case, six new sewer customers per year, that's a reasonable assumption of what might happen. It could be a lot better than this. Well, let's start conservative with the worst case. That being in the range there. Based on all the models with the use patterns that you have in the system and how you generate revenue, if you raise your rates by these factors and you have those sewer customers, you'll generate approximately this much money over the next five years by doing those things. So on the low end, you'll have $1.5 million in wastewater capital. $1.5 million is a lot of money, but it's not a lot of money to do wastewater treatment plant upgrades, not in prevailing wage rates, not with, you know, the filed subject laws that we have in this state and just not the way that we're allowed to do business as a municipality. On the high end, you have $3 million. Again, a healthy number to do a lot of good, but not enough to do everything that you probably want to do, especially with where you started three years ago. But when you start to look at what does $3 million or $1.5 million mean to Deerfield if you're able to finance that? And let's say, worst case, you finance it through SRF, through the State Revolving Fund, which is a 20-year loan at a 2% interest rate. There's a pretty good chance that if you want to keep get that money to do treatment plant upgrades with the town, that Wendy, you're going to be able to go apply for that money and get it. It's a big pool of money, and generally, if you have a need, the state will fund you. So if you were to be able to do that, what you could do is leverage that 
annual allocation, 60 grand per million finance. That's what you'd pay back on a 20 year note at 2%. This is the project that you'd be able to physically build. Now this doesn't assume any help from USDA. Uh, USDA, you can take your note out four years. It's currently at about two and three quarters percent. You can get grants of up to 45 percent. But I will tell you right now, the USDA is dry. That pipe is, is dead for the time being. And it may come back. It's been around for a long time. But I have a lot of clients that that is in neutral. Um, but this might be the range of potential project that Deerfield will be looking at implementing or have the ability to implement if you chose to do so. And I think that that's really going to help you as you move forward. So just to kind of recap our approach to your project, and we've gone through this very quickly, so we very much look forward to the Q&A and, and understanding what your vision is. The asset management plan. So every piece of pipe, every manhole, every pump, um, every piece of piping, every piece of equipment at the two treatment plants is an individual asset. Those individual assets will be scored based on a number of criteria, which you will contribute to in workshop fashion. These are the criteria most important to Deerfield, and here's how we'll weight them. And at the end of the day, you're going to have spreadsheets for each system, collection system and two treatment plants. The affordability. Okay, we kind of know as we go through this roughly the ballpark that you're operating in. You will decide whether that's 3, 8, and 13 percent. You may say it's 2, 4, and 6. It's fine. Whatever you as the leaders of Deerfield choose to do, we can input that into the model that's already developed. And on the flexible implementation schedule, I think it's important to know that we're going to have good years as a municipality, and we're going to have years where we're struggling against something else that may be going on in the town. And perhaps politically, you're not able to do much on the sewer side in a given year based on other things that may be going on in town. That's just the reality. Um, and it's important to have this model ready so when grant applications present themselves, you can quickly get into the pipeline for those programs. And if you're able to get in those pipelines and you can justify your needs, you always have a better chance of getting those funds for the community. Not going to go through these references, but certainly feel free to contact. These are, this is one of those other slides that you guys ask for information on who you could contact. So go ahead and fast forward there. Why do we believe we're a good fit? Well, we think we have a proven track record, albeit in a short time, not four years on our own, but 20 years collectively with a reputation in Western Mass. Um, we believe that we've brought an outside-the-box thinking to these projects and turned $22 million projects into $12 million projects, and perhaps $25 to $30 million projects into a $10 million project. Um, that's important to be able to do those. We think we have the right balance or the blend. Uh, of the, the, I, I call it the, the big firm horsepower and individual talents with the small firm minimalist that, that, that allows us to, uh, to act swiftly on your behalf, keep our costs low to you. Um, I don't know what world sometimes consultants think they live in, but how RFQs and things can be presented where cost doesn't matter. I don't live in that world. I don't think you do either. Um, cost is a very important element to any decision you've made, and I think you've demonstrated that on behalf of the people that have elected or appointed you in Deerfield in the short years that I've known you. And we're Western Mass based. Um, most importantly, perhaps, and it's not on this slide, is we think of the things that you've identified that you want to do in this project, we think that we've collectively already done. Say you have a five-step process. We think that we've you know, had the ability to already do a couple of steps with you. So we think that we can do more with less with Deerfield to help you get to that answer sooner. And that will help you keep your costs down and, and good for the residents and rate I'll just leave that up there in case you forget names because we got about 20 when we run. I know we got two Johns over here. <laughs> Wendy and Keith and Kip. And I'll, I'll be darned if I can remember everybody. So we're there if you want to ask us questions, which, which we'd be delighted to answer, or try to. Well, thank you. I think Wendy's going to go through some questions we had. And yeah, this is a little different presentation. Yeah. Um, so um, chime in if you feel you need to, except for Keith. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I know your stick. I can do it, too. <laughs> and you know it, too. You know that we've been through a lot, a lot of discussion in this town. This committee has worked for, I don't know how many months, this study About committee. 14. Done a tremendous amount of thinking and talking and researching. And I know from reading your notebook that a lot of good work was done. Um, so the town is, you know, a little, has just to give a little of the backstory, as you know, have done studies before right. and not move forward. Another study not move forward. So. I think there's a real interest in moving forward and building on that, not reinventing that wheel. 
So, um, so uh, the first question we have here, and just if you could talk about this more, you are three. This is your office. Is your three? No, these are the three people that will oh, work on this. We're right. seven person firm now. Right. Okay. And do you see any specialization needed that you would need to call outside your office or everything and what, what we would be looking so for? So when we're doing an evaluation of treatment plants and collection mm -hmm. system, the only thing that I had even traditionally subbed out when I was at the big firms was the field work related to the II projects, the collection system. And we do all that work in-house. So, I mean, he had his hands dirty this morning. He was downloading data off flow meters down in Connecticut today. So, I mean, James is your guy. You can literally look him in the eyes and he can tell you anything about that. When you get into more of the, the design and the upgrade elements in the projects, uh, we, like a lot of the big firms, um, will sub out certain pieces, whether it be structural elements of a project, occasionally electrical, um, architectural. Those are still things that even the big firms, and some of them have one person in-house here and there, um, but I'd say that uh, we can deliver those projects as economically as they can, and I'll be as bold as to say <coughs> our solutions are typically about half to two-thirds of the cost of our, of our competitors. So I'm confident that whatever would come out of here we already have developed or in the process of developing those projects, delivering those projects, Wendy, for communities like Orange, Pekin Falls, Connecticut, Great Barrington, where we've been asked to do those directly for them. So. Um, I think you talked a bit about what you've seen at the South Deerfield plant. Did you say anything about what you've seen at the Old Deerfield plant? We did. We had a slide on that. They're, okay. They're both in roughly the same condition. Are you, okay. You all set committee on that one? Then? Um, what do you see are the most important aspects of this project? The most important aspect of this project? Um, to be candid with you, I think one of the biggest challenges we've had before, and Tony will laugh as I say this, is Keith, whoever is in your position in any community is always the biggest advocate. But Wendy, we've, you're the third town manager that we've worked with in our short time. Um, the sewer study committee had just kind of gotten form right as the initial uh, rate study was being developed. I think the most important element for Deerfield is you. If your, if your select board and your sewer committee and your operations staff and DPW and town manager, if these groups are on the same page, that's the most important element of the project. You can't implement anything if you as a group aren't on the same page with what you want to do. I'd say the second most important part is having a common vision for what you can afford. You're going to have to settle in on something you're comfortable with. And we will be right there with you, but you're going to have to stand up in front of the residents and ask for that money at the appropriation. And I don't always want to be you when you do that. That's not a very comfortable thing at times, but it's, it's ultimately headed that way, whether it's through the rates or whether it's through some form of a tax. I'm not saying either one's going to require an appropriation, and those to me are the two most important things. I think the engineering is actually the simplest element of the project, in, in my opinion. I don't know. No, I agree. Finances. We, we don't really think like traditional engineers. I, I, we're all engineers, but I think we tend to maybe have failed in how we did things in the past or learned from them and allowed us to kind of take a different approach to the projects. And it's good for you, maybe not good 20, 15 years ago, but <laughs> that's life, right? Mm -hmm. um, what part of the project poses the biggest challenge for your team, getting over the challenge we might have in reaching consensus of what to go, where to go, or how to go for I think Tony would be best to talk about some of the how do I phase things at the treatment plants and, and deal with that. Yeah, uh, so the, the South Deerfield site is, is somewhat tight. You've got a farm field that you can't encroach on. You've got a river. You've got the state highway. Well, it's not really a highway, but it's a state road and they're right away. And one of the big issues you have at that plant is you have one clarifier that works and you have, well, quasi works. Mm -hmm. You have two clarifiers that were 1970s technology that if you have to run them long term, you have issues with, which I think Keith can kind of attest to now. So you're going to have, <clears throat> you don't have to, but one of the things that you may probably want to look at is some sort of a redundancy. Mm -hmm. uh, so you, the, the clarifier that you have, the, the circular one, Circular clarifiers perform substantially better than rectangular. That doesn't mean that every rectangular clarifier is terrible. But the big phasing of how do you build a redundant clarifier, if that's so what you choose to do, how do you phase that? Because you've got the floodway, you've got encroachment issues on the farmland. It's, you know, you've got existing infrastructure you want to maximize. We also have operations. And that's a lot of the uh, part that not everybody thinks about during construction is, is how are they going to operate the plant when there's a giant crane 
and the contractor is screaming, I got to get this done and this tank's got to come down. And Keith's saying, well, I got to meet permit and that tank can't come down. So you got to change the oil while the, the truck's running and moving, yeah. Yeah. you know. <laughs> so, I mean, those are the challenges and that's, uh, I've been doing treatment plants for 15 years. So I, I've worked on the operations and I'm not afraid to get my hands dirty, but I'm also able to look from an engineering aspect, but also from an operations aspect, okay, how are we physically going to do this? It looks great on paper. Oh, everything looks great on paper. Thank you. Okay. Um, and what, what do you think are the biggest challenges for the town? What components of this project might be the biggest challenges for the town? Uh, I think we touched on, I think we touched on one of trying to, you know, have a common vision and voice for the project. I think a second one is, as we balance the wants and needs and the affordability, you know, respectfully, Keith is probably going to have a different vision over what he needs versus wants than what you may have. And that's a fine balance and line that you have to run. And, um, you know, the, the, the flip side of that is you're going to the public for a significant cost at some point, an ask, if you will, of the public. So one of the challenges you have is you say, shoot, do I, do I ask for half of what I need now and go back three years later to ask for the other half? And that's a challenging gauntlet to run with the public, or do you do you be a little bit more aggressive and ask for a larger amount up front and perhaps have a, an implementation schedule where you've asked for something assuming that you might build it over time, which would work with the rates. I think back to the money, it, it always comes back to whether or not the project economics work and, uh, mm -hmm. and whether the politics are in place both with you and with the public and whether they're willing to receive it. It's going to be important to have people get their arms around it. I mean, obviously people don't want to spend money. but we found that generally when you explain things well, and sometimes we don't, we need your help with that. If you explain things well to the public and with the public over a series of workshops, invite them to the treatment plants, almost nobody comes. But oftentimes people will come around and say, this isn't something I want to spend money on, but we recognize that it's an important element to the town to be able to function, for us to be able to grow economically. I mean, the first thing a developer is going to ask when they come to Deerfield, do you have water and sewer? If the answer is, I don't have capacity for either, forget it. I mean, somebody might want to go build a septic system or put in a well, but I doubt it. It's always water and sewer. Um, you guys have great questions. This is <laughs> uh, well, I'm skipping some because I think yeah. you've addressed them, but if anyone yes. feels like you need that question answered, please jump in. Um, I'll ask this, although I think you covered it a bit. How would you develop a prioritized approach to the work that is needed, and how would you develop budgets for the work? And how would you work with regarding the, the engineering part of the project, um, or regarding the the, the, the capital? Both. Okay. Yeah. So, from the engineering side, I think I just want to let James chime in here because um, he I don't want Tony and I to be bullying him around. But James, talk about how you approach identifying the categories of how you look at the collection system assets and how you rank those with the, with the team and the public in terms of the priorities. Is Absolutely. Yeah, so we're already in the process through phase one and two of getting out there and you know getting our eyes on the collection system. As I said, phase one's underway. We began that about two weeks ago where we're starting to quantify the amount of flows coming into the sub areas. And phase two involves opening each manhole. You know, we've got our manhole inspection form me or one other field guys are out there, we're looking, we're noting any defects you have in there. Typically you might see falling bricks, you can see water coming into the manholes, and then we're performing the sonar test to get a score on the pipe. So what that allows us to do is it allows me to then take in the office and build a database. And as much as I love to work in the field, I love Excel too. I mean those are my two things. Former accounting so, majors. So, yeah. so I, I like being in there. I like, you know, getting the data in there, scoring it, seeing how things turn out because it really allows us to see you know, the big picture, you know, in a kind of in a tunnel where we can then present it much easier to you guys. You guys aren't going to be out there with us opening. You're welcome to, like you said, towards the treatment plan. If you want to come out and open some animals, you're more than welcome to. But it allows us to quantify and take what we need and help you guys to better understand it and better present it and prioritize it with the public. And that's also where the workshops come in because there will be questions, you know, is this area, you know, if it's a newer system, we saw some defects, do we really want to touch on that, or can that hold off? Should we look at the clay pipes, the older parts of the system? And that's where the feedback from you guys is also very important. And I think Tony hit on the treatment plant side regarding the, the implementation, the phasing. To answer your question specifically, Wendy, I mean, 
we've developed what, what we believe is the scope of work for your project. Now, you've not asked for a proposal. Right. And we didn't want to be so bold as to give you something without learning from you what was important to you. Um, but we're very comfortable, you know, following this evening. If, if we're so fortunate that you might select us, very quickly being able to put a scope of work and propose fee in front of you, and then that's a starting point. It's a discussion relative to what we think we heard that you want, and for you to react and tell us what you do and don't want. Regarding the construction, there's so many steps that will go into that um, relative to what's critical and most important. But um, the checks and balances of you, the public, the operators, the money, everything merging and coming together in terms of what's affordable. So hopefully we've tried to answer that one. Um, so I'm unclear on this. Maybe you did answer it. I'm sorry if you all heard and I didn't. Um, what, what, when you say workshops, could you say a little bit more about that? Wow, so that there's it? two, I think there's two types of workshops that we think are important in the project. The first is the workshops with, I say, staff on the infrastructure. So we would literally round table it up, get the whiteboard out. Okay, here are the assets um, for the collection system. How much does this percentage, how much does this pipe serve as a percentage of the town? So in other words, if you have an eight inch pipe on a dead end street that serves five houses, and you have an eight-inch clay pipe on a street that serves 300 units, which is like 30 or 40 percent of your system. Obviously, that asset, that asset's going to be a priority. So you'll help us identify the categories in that staff workshop that are most important to you and rank those so they can be weighted. And then there's the whole public informational thing, which is probably more high level with the public in terms of, you know, here's what we did, here's what we looked at, here's what we learned, here's the draft recommendation and implementation plan. Public comment relative to this plan, help us shape it. No, we don't want to spend any money. I mean, these are the things that you go through. So I think there's two separate tracks. There's a technical workshop track, and there's a public workshop track relative to, I'll call them informational uh, interboard workshops. However you guys want to present the term, the, the intent, I think. When you say public, you mean the boards and committees. The boards yeah. in a public format like this. I mean, to be honest, this is one of your first public informational workshops. I mean, you're vetting your interviews with prospective consultants in much the same, you know, this is a little atypical to have it, you know, public, we, we think it's fine, we're fine with it. But this is, I assume, your way of involving the public early on in the process so that they can be vested in the, the end product down the road. Could you go back to question eight, Wendy? Uh, explain your ability to provide consistent, responsive, and quality service to a town the size of Deerfield. All right, well, we're going to brag for a second, I think, a little bit. Um, when, we, when we put up the slide of the past projects we've done, I think there's three or four that we did on that list that literally came up as a result of us stopping in town or talking with Kevin. Wendy, you pulled us over here. I remember literally we were driving through town. Can you stop by? We want to talk about the rates and people want to look at the residential, non-residential. So four of those projects we've done with you, we've done all gratis. I mean, we haven't been compensated for those. We're happy to do them to help you. It helps you to gain trust in us and it helps us to get you to get to know you better. Um, the fact that we're long metal based, we're in Western Mass, we're serving those communities that we showed you, which are literally all around you. Um, we're up here twice a week. We'll meet as often as you want. We haven't charged you for those meetings. Um, you know, we generally be ex are expect to be compensated for services and scopes that we provide. But with that said, we understand that this this is about trust. And if you don't know and trust us, then um, then that's a problem. But um, we hope that we've had a chance for you to, to develop some of that trust over the past couple of years through those few projects. Captain Lake for Pump Station is another example. Well, I think I think the question may have been taken a little bit of school. I guess. First, I want to congratulate with your, your growth of your firm, but uh, the question arises, with that much growth and with that many clients, will you still be able to give the same kind of service? That's, well, what, I, that's what my question really was. I think it's a really good question, and I think, to be honest with you, we presented you with four references. We can provide a dozen. I encourage you to contact those references and ask them, how has DP service been three, four years ago relative to now? Have you seen any changes in the way we've been serviced? We think that we offer more services and more depth than we did before. You know, personally being able to have the redundancy of someone like Tony as a peer with me to tag team on things. You know, when we first started, it was just me. Um, so that was a that was a big a big change. Um, but now having seven people on board, having a full service crew in the field, um, having multiple engineers, we believe that we have the redundancy to do that. But 
the proof lies in our references. If they can't comment on the work that we've done and the service we've offered, then um, then that should speak for itself. Thank you. Another person you could ask too is Kevin Garbo. I would be here today, but. Oh yeah, yes, and, uh, and I've met you before. Off, right? I mean. <laughs> no, no, as I said, I'm just concerned with the amount of growth, which is phenomenal for you people. That you know you can still service your customers well. We respect that concern, and, and certainly leave that for you to be the judge of it. It's a very yeah. fair question. Um, what is your ability to respond to emergencies should issues arise during the course of the assessment? Um, I think our ability to respond to emergencies is pretty good. I mean, we're within about a 40-minute drive. Um, it wouldn't be the first time that I've been called out in the middle of the night uh, to something that's gone wrong, particularly like a force main break or something. You know, can't, I mean, to, to expect that Keith can't handle any of those things is, is silly. I mean, he's a, a very experienced, reputable operator. But I think more from a support standpoint of something horrible has happened, come help us. How do we get emergency funding for this? Um, how can we work with neighboring communities, many of whom we work with, to help solve those problems? And Keith, I'm sure you probably do a little bit of that already, or a lot of it relative to responding to emergencies. But um, we think we're as close as any other uh, consultant would be. And, um, you know, there are, there are consultants that have hundreds and thousands of people, but I challenge to ask you them. They have hundreds and thousands of clients. And those firms really aren't much deeper. I've been there. I've worked for firms that have a thousand people. and. Uh, your ability to service your clients and, and um, be as responsive as possible is a challenge whether you're seven people or 700 people. I can personally attest to that. I don't know. Yeah, I can, I can agree with that. As well. You ask any of the operators on those references about Tony and his, uh, you know, uh, accessibility during a concern or a process upset, and he'll be the first person there the next morning uh, to help somebody out. I know something like that came up a couple of weeks ago. Uh, we had, you know, process instability, if you will. And, right. uh, I heard about it. I mentioned it to Tony, and I think you know he called me and had even stopped by a week before. Yeah. So, again, these were things we were doing before you asked us to come mm -hmm. sit with you. So we hope that that speaks louder than our actions in the last three weeks of mm -hmm. how we act when you know we want something from you. So. I'm going to ask the next two questions together. How do you see future regulatory changes impacting the treatment plants and the collection system? And how should consideration of these changes be factored into our decision-making process now? Okay, I'm going to let Tony start with the plants, and then James or I will talk about some of the regulatory things in the collection system. So they've been saying on the treatment plants, they've been saying nitrogen is coming up the Connecticut River. Now well, it's uh, down in Connecticut; they have hypoxia in Long Island Sound. But they've been saying it's coming up for 10 years. Uh, we're doing work with uh, we're doing work with Northampton at their facility. I know they're concerned about it. We're also doing work with the town of Great Barrington up in the, in the Berkshires, and they're concerned about it. Uh, we have constant communication with representatives of DEP. The Springfield just got their permit renewed. They do not have a nitrogen limit in it. It's just an optimizing monitor, which the current permit at the treatment plant has the same language. Uh, realistically, it's 10, 15, 20 years out. But the question is, is do you build something now that you may not need, that costs millions of dollars that you then don't use right away? to be prepared because if you build it, it will show up in your permit. <laughs> so having a plan of, okay, if we're going to get a nitrogen limit, we're going to do X, Y, and Z, having the flexibility to know what is the impact from a financial standpoint, but also there are ways you can build in to you know, do some optimization of the plant that gives you flexibility at low cost that you only use when you need it. Um, I, I, I don't think phosphorus, I mean, that's the big one. That the cost for phosphorus numbers are huge. Um, I don't think that's ever going to come up. The Connecticut's not really impaired for that. And to be honest, your treatment plants, their nitrogen numbers are phenomenal now. So if they asked you to do better, I, you're almost at the limit of technology for what you're running. Uh, well, that's that's that you. Chesapeake in yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we try. Good for you. <laughs> um, and as far as the collection system goes, obviously the state IR requirements is the big one. Um, you guys are already working on that, you know, and we're, we've got everything in place to complete um, those requirements. Um, you know, we've been in contact with uh, Dan Kropaska at DP you know, quite a bit over the past six months with all the II stuff. And, uh, you know, he mentioned one thing he stressed um, with some other clients and, you know, hasn't applied directly to you guys is um, CMOM and then also collection system O&M manuals. Um, which is a little atypical, but something we have heard in some of our clients. Um, as far as the CMOM, I think it's Yeah, it's, it's all asset management based, but what EPA is making 
Old Stewart. In this case, they trickled it through Mass DEP and made them be the bad guys. But CMOM is Capacity Management Operation Maintenance. Basically, what they want you to do is be more <coughs> proactive with your collection system. Now, oftentimes, we, all we can do is wait till something goes wrong in the collection system. But they want us to be aggressive and assertive with fog, with the grease issues, with um, you know old clay pipes, and understanding that asset. We've anticipated those requirements, which is the reason EPA asked them for. That's why we've taken your phase two II project and turned it into asset management plan. We know what they want you to do. Why do what they want you to do and then do another project after the fact? This is exactly what they're trying to get municipalities to do. And quite honestly, Deerfield is well positioned to, to both comply with the requirements and to have a plan over the next 10 plus years to implement the CMOM program. So. Just curious how what you're finding out about our system as you're doing this work. Um, so we haven't done a ton of the actual uh, inspections of the system. Right now it's been the flow monitoring. I've probably personally opened about 30 manholes in town so far. Fortunately, the groundwater is not that high, so I haven't seen any direct infiltration coming in. Um, but just typical wear and tear. I mean, there's a lot of brick manholes that were constructed, you know, 50 years ago. Um, you've got bricks falling into the invert, which can cause obstruction of the flow. Um, nothing terrible so far. Um, like I said, I've only opened like 10% of the system. This point. That's one of your flow meters. I mean, that's the flow meter that takes most of your flow for South Deerfield. I mean, Keith probably could have told you that without me doing it, but you see peak flows when we started. This is a great time of year. I mean, we've literally had three more Easter's. Now, some of it's still laying on the ground, mm -hmm. but we had a big one at the end of February. Mm -hmm. 18 inches of snow that went away in a day with three or four inches of rain. So, Things are primed to have a really good season. You started off down around three, three hundred fifty thousand gallons a day. Even a little well, lower than up, that. Even a little lower, probably. Yeah. And between the end of February and uh, in March 10th, you can see we had a couple of days where things went up to six hundred. I think what we can tell you right now from this data is limited, but having done enough of this, is that it tells you see how this graph tends to peter off, go up, mm -hmm. and then peter off over a, a long amount of time. That's indicative of both infiltration and probably rainfall-induced infiltration. Mm -hmm. When you see those spikes that come up and go away and go back to normal very quick, that's direct info. That's catch basins, roof leaders. Most municipalities that aren't cities don't have a lot of that anymore. Most of it's from the groundwater. Now, whether it's a sump pump uh, or whether it's a yard drain or whether it's just a pipe that has cracks in it. I mean, we have clay pipes. There's joints every two feet. They used to put oakum in the joints. That's gone. There's nothing there. I mean, your pipe is a French drain. Your sewer main is a French drain yep. from the town of Deerfield. Yeah. Old Deerfield, South Deerfield. We know you've done a ton up in Old Deerfield over the years. But that's what that trend looks like. We want to see through the data more events, more rainfall events under different groundwater conditions to be able to definitively tell you what the nature of that eye is. Why this is important? It tells you what the capital recommendation is for your sewer pipes. Mm -hmm. Okay, when you have inflows, you don't go route and line pipes. You go disconnect roof leaders and, and, and uh, yard drains and catch basins. When it's infiltration, it it consumes your capacity. Keep um, it doesn't have as big a spikes as inflow. Trickier to get rid of too, because now you're looking at having to go in and either replace pipes, line them, route them. With a lot of different technologies that we can evaluate on that asset management plan, we can tell you. 150 bucks a foot to replace a pipe, $40 a pipe to line a pipe, $40 a foot to line a pipe, and then you can get all the way down to $8 a linear foot for an 8-inch pipe to route it. So there's different technologies you have, and again, depending on how critical that asset is to your system, that would determine how aggressive you want to be with the II. But with all that said, you're doing a good job meeting your permit. II is bad sometimes. Your drivers are going to be more um, on the structural side in your collection system. How do I make this asset last another 20 or 30 years as opposed to tightening up the I haven't done all the work over the years in Hatfield. I know what the soils are like here. They're challenging. You're always going to have groundwater. You can't get rid of that. It's probably some of the reasons you have such great agricultural resources in the area. I think on the, to, just to touch on that, on the treatment side, um, your, South Deerfield, the organic loads uh, are through the roof. And um, they're coming from some source uh, that we don't we have an idea of what it might be, but uh, the organic loads are high, which poses issues for, for Keith just from a biological process. Absolutely. Which is, but it's also one of the reasons your nitrogen numbers are, good, are so good is because it's a balancing act. Mm -hmm. 
feel like I'm going to get my treatment plant, not operator, but assistant uh, yeah. degree yeah. after yeah. tonight. Yeah. I can give you a dissertation on it if you want. If everybody needs to get some sleep. We get a little nerdy sometimes. Well, we can do You've this very both, sleep yeah. and hear it at the same Great. time. Um, how would you determine affordability of projects for the town of Deerfield? So I, I, I'd like to think we nailed that one in terms of kind of anticipating that question. Um, affordability is a moving target for any community. Um, we know that we, we think we know the range or the bubble that you're living in. Mm -hmm. What we need to do now is shrink that bubble by understanding what might happen with growth in Deerfield. You know, might there be projects that we're not anticipating that come in? We can make that denominator bigger. If we can, it changes the equation. If we can go get some grants. I didn't show anything on there, but at 60 grand per million financed at a 2% 20-year loan, if you go to 40 years with USDA, you're at two and three quarters percent interest, say you get a 20% grant, you're down to about 45 grand per year finance. Now, you take your mortgage out 40 years instead of 20. But, you know, um, you're savvy enough that you understand that you can do some cool things short term with bands, you know, that you can wait and you can fix debt as part of another project in the town. Just because the sewer you are paying for the debt doesn't mean you can't piggyback it on a school or library, private, whatever, you know, we don't know any of the specifics outside of a sewer, but you have opportunities to do that. So we can kind of fine tune and shrink that bubble. Yes, sir. Is there any value to adding a uh, new development in town that's going to add 72 sewer connections? Any development that's connected to the sewer will help from a post-construction O&M standpoint. So you've got Make the math easy because I'm a dummy. Say you had 800 customers now and you're going to add 80. You're going to increase your users by 10%. So you can effectively generate a 10% revenue increase in that year without changing your rate. With that said, I think it sometimes depends on how that project's getting constructed. If a private developer's building it and it's not going to cost anybody in the town anything, that's great. If it's running a new sewer service to an existing subdivision that has failing septic systems, that could be complicated because sometimes you're looking at fifteen to thirty-five thousand dollars per house in terms of a, a net cost for them, and now you've got a betterment that's going to have an annual payment of you know a thousand or fifteen. In this case, it's all brand new, paid for by the contractor. I mean, cost the town of Deerfield. Project it's going to cost town of Deerfield nothing. But I love seventy-two users as long as it's not going to be like. Um, a discharge of high strength waste. I mean, gallons are gallons if they're coming from residential properties. But 100 gallons of wastewater coming from, you know, an industry that might have a BOD that's 100 times more potent than regular wastewater, that's where you'd have to be careful. So there I would say is if it's something that's five times stronger, yeah, get the 72, but have them pay 350 worth of connections. Now you got a deal, you know. If you can handle it at the plant, that's the kind of trade-off. Politically, I know nothing about the project, so. But I like post-construction, having another mm -hmm. subject. You saw the map? Yeah. yeah. Um, I get the impression that, well, uh, it's probably the wrong impression because I'm, I'm kind of halfway between what I'm uh, hearing. Uh, do you have, I know you uh, have engineers. Do you have staff to, if we, you know, select you and continue on with you? Do you have staff in-house to do plans and doc bid documents and things like that? Okay, it's your size. Yeah. Uh, following up on that, do you have uh, people that can help uh, and work out plans for affordability? Uh, basically, uh, uh, developing an ER ERU or ERD system, if that would work out uh, as far as funding the capital that would be necessary for this. Uh, the, I asked the question before, is one of the things that we have in this town uh, going along with the two systems is uh, the town is lumped in as a single zip code as far as income, uh, which, of course, reflects on our, our um, eligibility for funding and so forth. But one system is in a high per capita area. The other system is in a much lower per capita area. Uh, do you have any experience or, ha or do you have contacts that could help us try to uh, get funds based on the per capita of the area that the uh, 
plant is in, whether it be in South Deerfield or Old Deerfield. So I think you asked three questions. Yes, I, yes, I did, I did, and they're all related to affordability. Back, I'm gonna go backwards. Um, so the last question about have you worked with communities to try to get money by zip code? The answer is yes. USDA used to let us do that all the time. We could literally sit down, I remember sitting down with Lyndon Nichols and Diane King from USDA and drawing the polygons on a map. 01757, whatever. You could literally take a zip code and they would allow you to break a town into small pieces. USDA unfortunately stopped allowing communities to do that about five years ago. So you can no longer get money. It's based on the town of Deerfield overall. Okay, so there may be programs that I'm not personally aware of that may still allow you to do that. I don't believe they're in the realm of the conventional water wastewater financing, USDA, SRF, uh, community block grants, which are sometimes used for it. So I don't believe that there is a, a strong likelihood of being able to do that. But to your second question, uh, we have personally helped communities develop user fee systems for communities up to 100,000 people, where you might look at it a little different. I've heard the term districts used here before in conversation, casual conversation, okay? And I, I get the dynamic of why you might look at Old Deerfield in a different manner than, than South Deerfield, okay? I get it. What we've done in those communities, Hinsdale comes to mind. So Hinsdale is a relatively new sewer system. It's a small town, but they built it over phases. So they have four separate sewer they call them billing categories, okay? And basically what it is is they all share in the O&M costs. So each of those customers gets a dollar per ERU or EDU, mm -hmm. if you will. That's a common way of doing it. It's a little different than you do it now, but it's not wrong. It's an alternative. When it comes to paying for wastewater debt, that's where it's a little bit different. So in the case of Hinsdale, one project was sewers around a lake, a low pressure sewer. It was a really expensive project, but they really wanted it and they were willing to pay for it. So they pay a rate per year that's like three times what the other people do. Then there's the older part of the town that's all gravity, no pump stations, and their rate is the lowest because they don't have any debt service on the book for their particular zone. And then there's another lake that has five pump stations around it, and it's all gravity, and they have a third rate. I think there's a fourth one, but I forget exactly what that is. The point is, you can split your costs however you want to do it. You could set it up in theory where old Deerfield would, maybe that plant gets shut down at some point in the future and you say, you know what, we want the people that are served by that plant to pay for the decommissioning of that plant and building a pipe from old Deerfield down to south Deerfield. Okay, and only those customers are going to pay for those costs. So you know how many ERUs, are? I use the term EDU, but I think we're speaking well, the same language. Same thing, yes. Absolutely, yeah. it's just vernacular. But um, in that case, you could allocate those costs. I mean, this is very simple mathematics. I think, you know, I've not seen any question marks over your head relative to the economics. It's clear that you all get that. It just comes down to how you want to manage those costs. And again, I get why certain people in Old Deerfield um, might have a different formula in terms of what they pay for their property and taxes, user fee, et cetera. I understand that. Um, so that is a way that you could look at it and you could synthesize that structure as part of your evaluation. The first question you asked, and Tony will bail me out if I don't fully answer this, is we're currently doing the design 100% in-house for the town of Orange for its upgrade of its treatment plant. It's a $13 million treatment plant upgrade, just under $13 million upgrade. We are literally doing all the plans and specs for that. Um, it is true that when we get to a certain construction phase that we may have to add staff again. Now, we're all trained in construction observation, but we'll have to add people and we're willing to do that. Quite honestly, it was the same thing I did when I was working at a firm in Westfield. It was the same thing I did when I was working at a firm in Enfield. Um, those, are, those are the ins and outs of, of managing those costs. I get your reservations relative to our size, but I hope I, I have answered those three questions. Yes, you have. Thank so. you. Grace. <clears throat> as, a, as a resident, I have a couple of questions. Um, one, you're currently under contract with the town of Deerfield? We have, we have, yeah, yeah. How many contracts do you have with the town of Deerfield? Uh, there are two, two contracts right now with Deerfield. And what are the completion dates? The completion dates are uh, June 30th for the first and December 30th for the second. Okay. Um, those are for the I.I. Those are I.I. And the approximate cost of those contracts to the town? Uh, I should have brought them. Um, I believe that the first one, the flow monitoring, is between 40 and 45. 
I believe, yep. Yeah. I believe the second one is in the neighborhood of 35 to 40, I believe. I, can, I will provide verification of Wendy tomorrow on those because I, right. I did not bring them. I should have. Just to follow up with that, part of the RPS is an evaluation of the sewer manholes, infrastructure pipes, lift stations, pump stations. So it sounds like you're, you're doing that now. We're, we're, we're under contract. Like I said, if you had a five step process, we believe that. We've done probably half of one bullet in terms of what we already know about your system. We've spent a lot of time at the plants and James has been to every manhole. You know, we believe we have a leg up, so we believe that you're going to not have to pay for things that you'd otherwise have to. Are you under contract also for the update of the sewer rate study? There is no scope of work for the sewer rate study. I made a personal commitment to, to Deerfield when that hit the, the blocks, if you would, that I would we would finish that. Okay. Um, we have updated the model as part of this yeah. effort to, to come tonight. That model's built. I mean, I know that I didn't like where it ended, but again, there were unique circumstances in terms of, you know, this wasn't in place. You've done a really right. nice job, so let's finish it. The second question I probably shouldn't ask. It's okay. Because Tony's here. But have you put cement shoes on Tony? So what are cement shoes? So he has, he's not going anywhere. He's an employee of DPC Engineering, yes. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, and we've worked together for the past several years. And we worked with the town. We're a couple of kooky guys, but we get along very well together. Yeah. Other questions? No. I'm, what, what are you? <laughs> <laughs> um, I think you've already talked about grant loan shoes. programs. We just unless it's something from new. He's Southern Connecticut, so you say some um, shoes down there. It's a little <laughs> yeah. it's a little dirty. Yeah. Yeah. Forget about Rhode Island too. <laughs> Um, so, I, I know you might have addressed this. Um, was your availability to begin the work? You're already beginning. Well, we, we, I think we, we've made the commitment us. that you know, we'd yeah. be comfortable getting a, you know, proposed scope and fee within days. Literally, um, we've essentially put that down. We want to button it up in terms of what we've learned tonight. Um, we would certainly be able to build this project in concert with what we're doing on the collection system side. Very realistic to expect that if you wanted to complete this project in calendar 18, 18, it'd be very very accomplishable. You may decide to extend that based on how you want to do workshops and public right. information on that. You said by 18 this year. Somewhat related to that, um, how many, yeah. I mean, we're a seven you person firm, so your resources are you much months. more limited yeah. than a, a large firm. Um, how many other projects do you have on you doing right now that might interfere with helping us out? That's a fair question. So, I don't know that I could quantify exactly where each individual project is right at the moment. Um, we are working for the, all of those communities as we speak in those, in those towns that we showed. Um, a fair amount of those projects are divided up into three categories. One is the state II requirements and the asset management that goes with that. The second is the planning projects, if you will, so the wastewater master plans or 20-year plans or asset management, you call it. And the third one is the projects that are into design and construction. So um, we have capacity in all three. Um, again, I can't, I can't stand here and tell you or convince you, you know, of some of the things that you have doubts. And I, I respect, we, re we respect those doubts that you have. But again, I'd ask you to contact the references that have worked both with us and with the big firms. And I believe that they will attest that not only do we serve them well, um, we present them with uh, fair, balanced fees, and that those big firms have a whole heck of a lot more clients and, quite honestly, uh, internal bureaucracy and stuff that prevents them from doing as much as they can per person as we do. Again, I sound arrogant by saying that, but um, I truly believe that, 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 that those are fair. But your questions that the gentlemen have asked are, are very fair. And I, I, you know, I don't think you're sounding arrogant. You're selling well, your company. But anyway, I, I kind of missed, I didn't misunderstood. Uh, you know, it sounded like you were available to start, you know, in a rel relatively short time. How long would it take you to do this? That's, I missed that part. Okay, so the engineering that goes into, we're looking at the collection system side. That has to be done by the state for December 18th. We basically got you an extension last December with the state to buy another year. That's what we needed to be able to get funds in place and get things done. On the plant side, let's say it takes you a month to execute a contract to basically greenlight things. I think that's a, a few weeks to a month is a reasonable expectation. 
uh, Tony and the team would be able to finish the evaluation of the treatment plants and develop the structure for the asset management plan of the treatment plants within two or three months. But at that point, then it comes back to you. So it's how quickly can we get the group together to have the workshops for you to provide input on that. Oh, and for us have, to integrate the, the That's understood, but, but yeah. your time to present it to us is what, it, you know, that's what I was looking at. Six months to, to, to do the project, have the workshops, update the draft report, and have a meeting. So if you say we're in, say it's April, by August, September, you're presented with a draft report. Um, I think it usually takes a month or two for a draft report to be vetted and to have a public informational meeting. I think December 18th, project done. So we'd be ready for town meeting next year? Yeah. Oh, easily. Okay. I think that we have some financial hurdles that are bigger than the engineering on the back side of this project in between. But your budget season typically <coughs> starts right around Thanksgiving and works into January, February. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. This, it's December 1st. Yeah. This, the, December yeah, 1st. is a little bit yeah. different, yeah. but it generally is, yeah. you know, it dovetails right. nicely with that, that plan. Now, hey, right. if you're not ready to bring it to the voters in the spring, then you, you develop an update. The implementation plan is the key to everything. Maybe you have a face program. There's a lot of work to do together, more so than, than just the engineering piece. Right. We've had an awful lot of work done over the years. You have. And I just, you know, and I'm talking about the plant designs and what have you, and, I, you know, I'm hesitant about spending money to reinvent the wheel on the stuff we've already done. You shouldn't. Yeah. When you get the draft scope and fee, uh, I, I think that, I mean, Kevin's not here maybe to attest, but for anybody that's seen our invoices and our proposals, we tend to structure them pretty openly. We don't have one of those cryptic DOS-based accounting programs. I mean, <laughs> we do things in Excel, and you can see line by line, this is where you're spending the money. We'll give you the full man-hour matrix of what our costs are. And if there's something in there you don't like, you take it out. Uh, one last question. Uh, with all the scope to be presented in town, Will no will not be any design. No design, no. And what will be opinions of probable cause? Absolutely. And we kind of have some of those now, but I hesitate to put them out before we make sure that we, you know, we vet them. Yeah. We certainly hope we have the opportunity to work with you through the implementation of the project, but we got to earn our trust. <clears throat> well, I th think um, we're pretty much done then for questions. Is that correct, everybody? Yeah. Okay, well, thank you so much. For We're thank very you. grateful. You've all been troopers tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. I really much. appreciate it. Thank you very much. Um, thank you. I want everyone to stay for a few minutes, please. Well, okay. I do. But can you all stay for just a few more minutes? That's on. Is this for UMass? Are you with UMass too? I am. It's fine. It's fine. I just want to. John is working in the town of Oh, yeah. Let me see three hours. I've learned to do that. I've learned to do that in the military. I can remember one class I went to in South uh, basically in AIT. And they were DI'd and walking around and putting people side to head. Memorial Lane, I don't know if you know where I And the class started. You know where Sarah's is? The guy poked me. I only remember like four Sure. You have to sleep with your eyes open. And the golf silo. Yeah, that, well, I mean, that's what I had. If you were to start this up a little bit of the west, that's like half a mile. Like, the rights are black. When I yell, on your feet. Don't get up. You just bought a small one. Six guys stand up. Thank you so much. It was really nice. Anyway, I just. Thank you. Really, I appreciate it. Okay. Bruce. Thank you. Yeah, I'd like could you just turn on the lights? I was going to say, could you please stay here? <laughs> DPC. Anyway. He didn't want to. I know, I could tell. It's always okay. saving. <laughs> um, Trevor will be right back. They're, they're ready to roll now. Um, I just, That's what we need. <coughs> just we don't need to make uh, quick, you take a quick poll. Um, Absolutely. We're, we're, we're going to put um, this on the agenda for next Wednesday. Um, but I guess it really doesn't matter since 
my my opinion is I like this very much. What? You like what? Oh, go ahead. I didn't hear. Yeah, you. I like hear you. them very much. That was my just my first brush. You want? Let's just go around. Jeff, what's your first impression? Which one? I think uh, David Perkett has more background, more familiar with our situation. Okay. Uh, Prickert, same thing. I think they made a best, much better presentation. It was, and it followed closer to the request for qualifications. I heard it. I heard all the same things. I heard David say that they went to every uh, station. I heard the other guy said he went to thirty. Um, don't forget, these are the same people who charged us four thousand dollars for Captain Lathrop and didn't do half of the work. Um, Which who? Don't. Were you Stuart? Yeah, you know, I mean, I heard, I heard the exact same thing that I heard the last time, you know, just different head, different titles on the thing. Um, I'm just, one of the things that I did like is I do know that they've been involved with a lot of the work. They have a lot of history and background. Uh, but <clears throat> you know, the, you know, when he says they do free work and stuff like that, that also comes along with other work that they've done that they've charged a lot for. You know, so it. I'm not really prepared to make a decision. No, but we're there's, make a there's decision a lot of Wednesday. things. I'm this is your a poll. first impression. Yeah. So, is your first impression? I have. I'm neutral. Okay. I'm gonna. I'm gonna say I'm neutral. Also, although I like the idea of dealing with a guy who's self-employed and uh, seems intent on uh, keeping his customers happy and being responsive, and, and I think he he demonstrated that enthusiasm. Uh, and he clearly like he, he clearly enjoys what he's doing. He, he I think he had a he had a better presentation, and I, I think I learned a lot more. So, My but I, I wouldn't I wouldn't. No, I know this is first impression. Hands down, though, firm to go with. He he knows his stuff. He's a young team. They're they're just they're just knee deep in it. I no doubt he, he, they would uh, treat us well. This is this is an area that I don't have any. Expertise in, and I'm just I, asking your impression. I, I, I think both of them are perfectly capable. I don't know how the cost would break down. Mm -hmm. I, uh, I think Prickett, uh, that firm has uh, an awful lot of built-in knowledge of our system, et cetera, et cetera. And some of the stuff that we call for in the request for proposals uh, is duplication what we're already doing. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I think that we're probably better off. I think, it, didn't Tony D. Simone, wasn't he the fellow that worked for Weston and Sampson? Yeah, yeah. 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 And I, I, think he, I think he's got, a, I think they, he's got a lot of knowledge upstairs. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, and uh, I think maybe that's the best route to go. I'm, it's not an exact science. No. Definitely DPC. I like DPC. I think they can hit the ground and start running. They can start away. running. We don't, yeah. have to, we don't have to reinvent the wheel with them. Yep. They can just get going. And also, um, Stantec didn't even go up and see the old Deerfield plant. Yeah. No, they did not. That's a good thing. He's yep. got to get the second clarifier going. Yes. Mm -hmm. But I just want you to know, when I read through all the material, there was um, $3 million estimate to upgrade the treatment plants for the nitrogen and the phosphorus. And I had told you I'd gone to that workshop, you know, um, and have an RCS is doing all kinds of no-till, signing up farmers, putting equipment and all that to, to do um, infiltration. And it was wonderful that they were flexible, but they were the first, but um, Brickett was the first one that talked about why the nitrogen is an issue. And it's coming up the Connecticut River and I, you know, obviously through the conservation district and all my work with the s soils and stuff up and down the rivers, um, I know that, that they gave the correct answer. And, you know, the fact that Weston Sampson wanted us to do the upgrade originally, and then Stantec was, well, you know, you have three to five years to work this out. The correct answer was prickets based on what you know, my information from the Conservation Service and working on the Connecticut River. He just brought up the issue with the NPDES permit for 
Springfield is not even included. Right. right. And, and, so and that's and every I do, five and I, years. And, so and, by the time it gets up here. Right. You know, 10, 15, and and I, I know that, I mean, I just know this stuff from all this. I mean, that's one of the reasons you have NRCS programs that work with farmers because of runoff. But to be Nobody nailed, asked you where you stood. Oh, I, I already said pr I was wanted Prickett. Okay. I, I feel like they'll, they'll be willing to work with us and get done the clarifier stuff that we need to get done, but then help us move forward with in a phased kind with of way. funding and stuff. Yeah. So, yes. at, so at this point, why don't I suggest that you call them back up after Wendy vets out any of the references you want, call them back up and sit down and have them come up and present an informal proposal. Mm -hmm. Well, that's what we're going to try to do for next week. I don't know if we can get it on the, have them come and respond, but it, it is clearly that you all feel the same way that, um, I mean, Kip said he was neutral, but Trevor and I feel very strongly that we wanted um, Prickett. And so, um, and then your, your opinions um, I would just like to, uh, I, I had planned so on we, talking to Josh and we'll, um, yeah, it's um, a good idea. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I'd like yeah. to check in with him and yeah, just let him know yeah, and, right. you know, um, and give you So then feedback. what we wanted to do was next, if we can get them to come back for next Wednesday to, you know, can you, uh, move this along. Get well, the we, we, tape from tonight's meeting and get it to Josh. Oh, he can see it on. Well, as yeah. soon as possible. So he gets it and he can listen to yeah the both of them so that you get the input well yeah the dvd or what I, I mean we have to move on the clarifier okay that's what i'm saying yeah we need to be do figuring need, do we need a, a sewer study committee to discuss the clarifier the what's broken can't we just get it fixed yeah, yeah. Uh, well I, 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 we really don't have a choice so yes we're just going to get right. it fixed. I, mean, I, I don't think we need to be our no no, the committee the is do we need the capital planning committee. But That's what what we're going to do is try to figure out. I need to figure out how much we're talking about money, and then I got to connect with Jeff and see how we're going to handle it through CIPC or whatever. And but I would assume it would come under come out of sewer reserves, and I would assume because it's an emergency situation, we don't want to get fined. Mm -hmm. So we can do some kind of meeting and make. A support. Keith, mm -hmm. what, just based on your experience, what do you, mm -hmm. there was talk of a redundancy clarifier. Is that that's down? Can you fix this one before you get a redundant one in? No, it either no. has to be we need to rehab the existing rectangulars, which I've already had two firms come through in the last month. Okay. To look over, take pictures, and they haven't gotten back with me with an estimate yet, a quote. Yeah. They both say that we're looking at probably. <clears throat> in excess of two hundred thousand dollars just for rehabbing the rectangulars Which are not so that we can put them into service and take the circular out to fix it right. Right. um the you know, other option would be to, to start figuring out a new secondary clarifier a circular one and apply that kind of money toward a new clarifier which will ultimately come about anyway it's through a, any kind of plan upgrade anyway. you're going to need a circular one anyway. i kind yeah. of hate to invest in the old stuff Pardon me. I, I kind of hate to invest in fixing the old. Oh, I do one. too. Uh, but I'm to kind of the, the secondary clarifier before you can fix the other one. I mean, what do we? I, I, I mean, that's a I, I, for some yeah. people probably too. But I'm just thinking it's going to take a while to. I don't know about absolutely land will. constraint and talking with neighbors and I, you know I know I I did talk to the lady that lived next door and you know uh, just she happened to be my. Yeah, it would need to be one of the last, in the last position before the river, like the current okay. one is, because the whole thing is gravity flow. I see. I see. So, so the only enough. viable place to put a new one, according to Tony, mm -hmm. is he has selected an area um, kind of catty corner behind the existing one. Okay. I'm a little uncomfortable with that because of the close proximity to the river, I'm worried about flooding. Um, he says that can be addressed. Okay, I'm sure it's going to be more costly to do that. Um, I have other ideas myself, but I'm not an engineer, and people tend to want to listen to engineers. So, um, 
it would be a little more grandiose than that, but it would involve basically taking out that lower building, utilizing the existing rectangulars and the chlorine contact chamber underneath the lower building, connect those to the existing aeration tank in service right now, and partition it out so that now you can have discrete, I, I calculate there's enough room for six uh, rectangular column columnar tanks, which is common to do rectangular for aeration tanks. You can create six by taking out that building. That would leave the available aeration tank space for another secondary clarifier right next to the one that's there. They would be sitting side by side, and then you would have new aeration tanks this way. Uh, and it would fit perfectly because the existing splitter box could be utilized for inflow into the aeration system. And the outflow that go, is currently overflowing going to the existing, the current secondary, could just, you could build a structure there to split it between that one or the new one right there. It'd it would be minimize cheaper than the trying cost. To, it'd be, it would be cheaper than acquiring land, though, ultimately, I think. Well, yeah. Thinking, Tony was thinking we wouldn't have to acquire land because it would be near the river. Yeah, but it would be really flood. close but you can't, to the river. But it would be very hard to, re, you know, um, when yeah. you, to, to permit that right. yeah. now. Yeah. You have to have a certain percentage of resiliency, and that per, that to build that resiliency, which is really just concrete, I mean, you're talking about concrete way up. Yeah. I mean, I think it's yeah. going to be really expensive. Yeah, versus, I, do, I agree. Versus taking I mean, because you have to, now when you have this whole permitting stuff, you have to have the um, climate adaption mm -hmm. resiliency built in. And I just, again, from my experience, I would just say that that's probably going to be very expensive. And we would pose sure. this question, obviously. Oh, yeah. I, I mean, we're going to have to somebody. Actually, think of that idea. Yeah. I would, be, I would absolutely love to work with whatever firms has selected to at least propose mm -hmm. the design that I can envision. Since and in fact, I spent quite a bit of time today walking around the plant, uh, more or less eyeballing, not precisely measuring. Sure. That's what engineering firms do. Right. I mean, I can easily tell you what we, what we could utilize as far as new treatment, new, like the headworks, et cetera. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm all over that, and right. I'm knowledgeable about it. Mm -hmm. But as far as figuring out hydraulics, size, you know, placement, depth, all these other things, electrical stuff. That's what engineers do. Of course. So, um, but I do think it's possible um, to reconfigure the existing aeration tank to make it, um, to build in redundancy there too. For example, you would have three in service or two of the six, and you could swap them out as needed for maintenance to replace the diffused uh, header uh, socks that go on that bring up the bubbled aeration yeah. from the bottom, get rid of that surface clear, surface clear um, aerator, big, and do it from the bottom up, right. which is the next step for that anyway. Um, but what that would enable is for you to use an existing hole in the ground, which is basically the same depth almost as the existing circular is, and drop one right in there, just take those walls out and right. carve it out, and there you go. You've already got the hole almost there. Yeah, that would save a tremendous amount. The existing splitter box could be utilized for inflow, and it would be simple to split that effluent into two tanks that are sitting side by side. But I think they would so. be able to be worked with you. Better. Exactly. Yeah, I, I agree. Yeah. Just say something about what I heard. Um, besides, it was a whole different presentation. Um, not just the familiarity, but they sort of they did customize it for us. I, mm -hmm. I felt like the other could have spoken to any community. Um, but also, I really do believe that they would try to create something that was not only going to work, but was really going to be the best option financially for the town. Mm -hmm. I do, too. Mm -hmm. um, but I have to tell you, what impressed me the most was the whole thing about the nitrogen, because that, you know. That's really, your thing. <laughs> I know. I do. But I know, but I know about that. And right. that's why that um, answer was a correct answer. I mean, you know, the Chesa Chesapeake Bay is under strict. Exactly. And all that, the, all their problems and, and stuff like that. And then it's like they're trying to introduce that through Long Island Sound. Yes. And, all the, and yes. they are working up. But there's yes. no way that we're going to have to be impacted by that. Well, yeah. I think eventually we will. We will. Yes. And I think but phosphorus not, actually will be more than nitrogen because that's the one that's doing the most damage globally everywhere. Are those the algae blooms that you're talking about? Well, they can cause that. They, they they can, cause and nitrogen can't do, but. Yes. Um, but the thing do is, here's the deal. Old Deerfield 
it should not be neglected. Right now, Old Deerfield misses permit quite often, and it has this winter substantially. That river does not have nearly the dilution factor that we enjoy at South Deerfield with the Connecticut. There we have greater than 90% dilution. So that would be one of the last plants, in my opinion, to be permitted for phosphorus and nitrogen. Old Deerfield, on the other hand, especially in the summer when that river, can, you can walk in that river and it's only up to your knees, if that, yep. has a, is far more susceptible and sensitive to any kind of uh, nitrogen, phosphorus, or just general BOD and untreated ammonia discharge, mm -hmm. which happens at Old Deerfield. Uh, so it, it's the that, most likely candidate to be permanent. But isn't the schools, aren't the schools on vacation so we have less flow? I mean, I know they have camps, but it's not the same usage. So our usage is down in the summer. And couldn't we do a lot of that no-till stuff so that when they go to sample the river, are the what is actually happening in the river. Um, what I'm speaking of, um, Caroline, is independent of nitrogen and phosphorus. What I'm speaking about is what the plant is currently permitted to remove, which is I, oh, I biochemical remember, yeah. oxygen demand, um, untreated or unconverted yeah. ammonia, and um, independent of phosphorus and nitrogen, and right now, at times, we do have problems meeting permit for BOD at Old Deerfield. Um, so it is the most likely candidate to be permitted for, for anything. It could be very easily. Is there, that any, will possibility, be the one is there any possibility we could look at um, what's happening with Great River Hydro when they do the releases, and we could time our release to their release? Um, Carol, because that's, Carolyn, uh, yeah. are you, you guys going to make a decision tonight? Because what I'm hearing in the discussion is you're trying to solve problems that these I know, guys ought to be involved. But I, I don't have a lot of time to, I'm sorry, you, and you are absolutely correct. But Keith, well, maybe we we'll, can follow up on that discussion. <laughs> but and I, I, would, I would like to jump in here very quickly, and I don't know if Jack, because he yeah. co-chairs the uh, Capital Improvement Committee too, you had mentioned that you're going to uh, possibly bring something forward on an emergency basis to the Capital Improvement Committee. Uh, right now, from what I've read of some of the members of the Capital Improvement Committee, they have not been involved with this process, and I don't know if they'd feel real comfortable voting on that, uh, and I can't speak for them, unless there is some type of maybe consensus from the, the uh, Sewer Study Committee support at least given us a nod of support so we as co-chairs could say to our members that we do have the support of the study committee and so at least that would i think would put them a little at ease as far as moving well, something well, forward not and yeah i don't know jack if i'm reading that wrong or not but so carol do Makes i understand sense. what we're talking about here is is program to basically to, to come up with a temporary fix so that you can do, repair the clarifier and you're going to break out an existing tank and put a new clarifier in there? No, what we're going to do is we're going to start, <coughs> we're going to we're start the process. Going so going so they can re okay. repair yes, the other one. we are. We're talking about two we're different things. We're talking about a couple hundred thousand dollars and you're talking a half a million. Well, we're talking, about, we're well, talking about the, um, about the, the, the the RFP, the assessment project, which which we don't have a figure. which we don't have a figure, but we do have a figure from Stantec, which was back when, which was like thirty-seven five or something 000. like that. Yeah. Right. What I wanted was uh, a consensus but the, to. The, but what the the other yeah. the other thing we're ta talking about is replate is is fixing the clarifier clarifier which involves actually installing a new clarifier. Mm -hmm. Or repairing an old set yeah. so right. that they can be put so, into service long right. enough. We're not going to decide, we're not going to decide that. You're going yeah. to, you're going to. You're going to get the information. The consultant and the engineers to decide which way and then come back and present it to us. I agree. Uh, we, we don't, and does we it don't need have to be presented to us? Well, it's it needs to be presented to the Capital Improvement 
Okay, well, when you say us, you mean CIBC. And, but, but doesn't the sewer the sewer study committee want to be in the loop? Too? I, what I was no. thinking of no. is no, that that's something no. that needs right. to be done. It is not not yeah. a discussion yeah. about that. And, and I'm certainly in agreement that it has to be done, and that and that we should well, definitely move forward with that. We're obviously going to have a public meeting on that. Yeah, so you you all and, would be invited to come if well, you how, wanted to. How about hiring the engineering firm and letting them get involved of course, with yes. the discussion? Yes. And make it, that, that know, and that's going to be on the agenda for make next a week. Here, and I suspect I mean, but, you're right. But do you but want to make a decision here here without uh, doing any vetting, without talk, without no? Without Wendy's going to be any of the references. Wendy's without, going to do this between well, now and right, next Wednesday. We need to do, and we can talk. You can sit here and talk until the cows come home about you want to what you want to do with the plan. Uh, but. What we have to do first is get somebody on board yes. who can be the, you know, whatever is the yeah. so, lead in it, say, yes, that's, this is really what you need to do. Right, and you're absolutely right. I didn't mean to get, but some of this stuff is. So we, is have, like, so we have two possibilities, and, and we can, well, I don't, I'm not even sure who's deci whose decision is it. It's or the sewer, sewer commissioners. It's sewer the commissioners. sewer commissioners. Uh, Trevor, right. and I, Trevor and I feel, um, Kip. Kip is neutral. He's neutral. He's you said you were neutral. neutral. You must have fallen asleep. No, you said you were neutral. <laughs> no, I, I, that's okay. Can we, can we go home? Or you yes. Can so that she can so Kip, Kip and I feel... Do you want a motion, motion to adjourn? Time out. Time out. Kip and I feel... Time Bruce? Set up another meeting. Set up another meeting. Bruce St. Peter's? Time out. You want a motion to adjourn? Set up another meeting first. Sewer study committee? We need a I don't know if anybody wants to stick around for this conversation and be part of it. Guys, let Trevor... Trevor needs to speak. Can I have a question? Um, Kip no. was only neutral on what firm to, that he liked on that question, but he's not neutral on where we're going. Right. So I'd love some input from you. Um, I, I don't I mean, know. You've, you've been on the I sewer know. study committee. You've been involved with this for a long time. I'm just kind of just jumping in based on these things. I think they seem like a good firm to go well, forward I, with. I, I tend to think that a lot of this dialogue is what the sewer study committee has done for a year. Right. And we came to general consensus, we don't know. So we need to get engineers right. involved. So do you so, have a problem if we put this on the agenda for next Wednesday? No, why, no. Okay, why and that we're gonna make a decision. Finish what you're saying. No, I was gonna say, I, 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 I have no problem put, putting it on the agenda. Okay, and so if we invite back Dave Brickett and his team to give us a, a quote. So what are you gonna hire him? What? A when? After we after. After we get a quote. Well, if after if if after. Right. We start, we check references and Wendy to will Josh bet everything. Whatever. Yeah. So and we get and we get Josh's input. Good sleep so she can start first thing Sorry, in the morning. Yeah. Okay. I, 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 but I just want to make sure everyone was on the same page that we we really do have a, a not a drastic emergency but a semi emergency with the clarifier and we need to get moving on that. And that's why we're going to get moving on this consultant. And Wendy will move well, on. I, I, okay. That whole topic is, I, I don't think that you're going to go in there and uh, put in a new clarifier. This has to be part of this whole plant off yes. over. But you know, you can repair they can give us some the one guidance. that's there. Maybe the part that's bent can be removed and straightened. You know, but. Well, that's why we're going to have the engineers come in. Mm -hmm. the, what we're talking about is hiring Prickett initially to do the assessment mm -hmm. this clarifier and everything we know needs to be done but that becomes an engineering feat mm -hmm. we're looking at the assessment right now and going back to that i know but we're I going to hear amongst uh, right and i know amongst you know constantly here we spent keep spending money for studies and money for studies but uh, i'll be the first one to say it and, and agree with that totally but as an electrician uh jack is uh, being in the car business uh, John is an electrician. I don't know about anybody else. When you go to do some work for somebody else, you're not going to listen to, well, he said I could do, this was all taken care of. You're going to have to create your own parameters if you're going to make that presentation to that customer, whether you like it or not. You may have spent, you know, gone to three different mechanics, if you don't mind if I use you, Jack. He, he, the customer may have gone to three different mechanics and said, Jack, I need this repaired, or you're going to guarantee it. Because they said it was going to be there. 
You're going to say, no, I have to look at it myself to make my own opinion. It's not that you're trying to inflate it. It's not that you're trying to charge more money. But you, you have a customer that wants to be satisfied. So, yes, you can refer to what there. But making a final decision is going to be based on what you find. And you, so, you, so as much as all this money has been wasted in the past, we do have to waste money again. The only thing we do is make a commitment that this time it's not going to sit on the shelf. We have to move on this. We can't kick it down the road. And I also want to thank Keith for all his time because I think he has made the whole committee a hell of a lot more smarter. We've been able to ask more intelligent questions. Most of the stuff that everybody we have brought in, Keith already addressed a long time ago. Okay, I think so. I think uh, the and so I have to give him all the credit in the world. He is, he, you know, he's he's really helped to educate us yes. as a committee. And as much as he feels sometimes that we're not paying attention, we really are. Okay, uh, because uh, I'll be the first to admit I do. This is all brand new to me. You know, so uh, uh, you know I do relish your opinion and don't get frustrated. <laughs> okay, I think, and based on what Bruce said, it sounds like you know they were going to maybe curtail some of their costs because they're doing a lot of that stuff. Right, already. exactly. So it seems, it seems right, they, like because they, they, they have researched it themselves, mm -hmm. you know, and, and they and say, uh, you know, they, um, if, I, just like me, I will pick through information that I think I can use. But when it comes to the final decision, I decision. have to do my own research. Mm -hmm. And that company, is that, you know, what we're dealing with, they're in the same boat. Yep. Right. Let me throw this out there that... Um, what Keith was saying earlier about all the everything that they were speaking of we've already been through uh, Would it be wise of us when we speak to them to kind of limit the initial focus just on the South Deerfield plant? And you know deal with that because I have this awful feeling that if we all the other things are important You drag that in and we're going to be right back up to the big number and then it's going to be a huge thing of how to pay for it. I think that might be a wise idea, and it might well, even be wise to well, we don't have limit it to, um, to don't bring have it to down to just what do the assessment, just as to what really needs to be applied to the plant, not get into a town-wide pipe assessment yeah, and, right. and rating every manhole well, and everything right, else. Right. Uh, okay. As far as as far as the flow, so. if they're already doing that, that's yeah, fine. Because they it, have to. You know, well, what they have to do, that. fine. But as far as anything else, keeping that number small so we can do something, do something right. and, and not there's a lot of things we can do by lining the pipes floor again. and mm -hmm. okay. all that that's, stuff. that's really a separate, to me, that's yes. a separate. Down down a week ago, road. Tony came to see me at the plant, South Airfield. We had a discussion about the current state of affairs, what was new, what was old, et cetera. Uh, I scolded him big time forever going there with the $30 million because it's just has been nothing but counterproductive ever since. Mm -hmm. And I encouraged him to never, ever do that again. <laughs> I said, if you're going to come and present this coming week, then please stick to what we really need right now and do away with all this highfalutin stuff that's going to cost millions and millions of dollars that this town can never pay for in a million years. I, do not do that. And I agree with that, but I, I, I really need to address this, and I'm not trying to hurt anybody's feelings, but we need to deal with the truth. When I first learned during the Sewer Study Commission of the size of that plant, I got really angry at the engineers. And in the office, I really chastised them a lot. And the guy said, listen, he says, you know, you might be upset. I did what I was asked to do. I didn't believe him. So I spent the time and I went through the selectmen's meeting and the engineers did what he was asked to from five individuals in this town. And so we have to be very careful what we ask these people to do because they're going to deliver what we ask them to. So any ideas that we have, we need to be, we need to check them and talk to ourselves before we dress them. Because if we say, oh, this is what we w would like to have, you gotta be careful. What we like to have and what we need are two different things. Mm -hmm. So we have to be very precise as, this is what we have to have. You know, we're gonna listen to you, take your recommendations, listen to Keith, take his recommendations. Mm -hmm. But don't give them this, you know, big rope. Why can't we ask them? 
what do we have to have? Well, that's what thing. would be the catalog? That's what I'd like to do. Ask them, you know, after they assess it. Well, that what was what we're need? having yeah. them do. I know, but I just want to warn everybody to okay. be very careful. As that to should what be we done. Have. That should that should not be. They should not be approached on a one-to-one -one basis. It should be a common to the town administrator. So and nobody talks to. And everybody comes through to, the board the of town selectmen and, or whatever. We but have a one public person, meeting, so it doesn't get distorted. But I, everything is be here in this three of us, and you all, please whatever. come. I'm just saying, but everything is done. Not, no, nobody, right. nobody approaches here, the three of cricket us. individually and say, "I would like to see." Absolutely. That's all I'm saying yeah. because that's what happened last time. Exactly. I do think Tony um, would like to make amends on what happened before. Um, Okay, that aside, the fact that he's a part of David Pritchett's team is a big plus for me because he has probably more knowledge about the town's wastewater treatment plant, plants and collection system than anyone bar none. And he would be a really big asset. He, right out of the gate, he already knows right. a phenomenal amount about this town. And, and the plants and the collection system. Could I leave your vote goes to DPC? Absolutely. Could I ask a question? Yeah, um, absolutely. So, oh, I know what we're doing. Yeah. Um, but does it make sense to roll into this project, since we don't have to go out to bid for engineering services, some engineering for a clarifier? I think so, since yeah. Since that's been identified as a... Or, or recommendation about the solution for that. You don't even have to zone the aeration tanks out don't go for BNR. Don't go I just, just want to talk generally. Put diffusers in, and, and it would improve dramatically the process. Just that alone. Just to include that, so we could get Headworks to doing and it. A new clarifier. Quicker. Boom, you're Do you done. know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I mean, really. <laughs> Did you just hear what Keith said? Headworks and new clarifier and diffused aeration, and then your effluent would be so pristine you would be able to do away with chlorine and do UV disinfection, which is a lot safer for this town than zapping chlorine all the time. Yeah. Let me ask Keith something. If another clarifier, a second clarifier, could be put directly south of the existing one, say the fence wasn't there, would that be, do you think that that's too far away from the current pipes that would work well? East. South. Yeah. South would be the potato field. The potato field? Yeah. Yeah. Um, if the, no, it would not be too far away. Okay. Yeah, it could. Um, and actually, but you would have to dig a fresh hole. Oh, I, I get that. Yeah. I'm just thinking construction-wise, what you spoke about earlier about removing those deep pits and all that, that's yes. a, a very expensive process oh, to go yeah. through. And, you know, <clears throat> shoring up the other walls and everything that's there. Right. There's a lot of pipes and stuff. So yeah. I was just thinking yeah. sometimes starting fresh is... Sure. Fine. Absolutely. Uh, but my understanding is the whole conservation thing. And well, I, I had started working on that some time ago, and I stopped about you know getting some more land because yeah. there is more land in Deerfield. It doesn't go into weight. Yeah. And uh, you know, Bob had given me some information on how the land was put in APR, and I researched how it could possibly be removed, and, mm -hmm. and I just stopped. That would actually be an ideal location. And, you know, here again yeah, yeah. from the so things that I yeah, looked at, yeah, might as well. Fair. We're not talking a lot of land. I think it was like an acre and a quarter or something. Yeah. Yeah. So if 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 we took out an eight and a quarter, that zone. means we would yeah, have to offer three, yeah. three to five acres to get it out. To get it out, you have to. Um, which one so, of them you do a yeah, trade? Yeah, but some some of the things that when it was put in was put in that, that the town would have. When some was the APR? I don't remember when that Is was. Is it an old APR? Because there are different. The APRs have different rules. Is that available in, out of East Deerfield? Is that available out of East Deerfield, the land that you need? What? <clears throat> to make up? East Deerfield. Deerfield by the train. Oh, okay. yeah. Right, but no, I... I don't it, think that we're, would actually But if it's one of the trade. original oh, APRs, it ha it's much less restrictive. We restrictive. We voted to claim that for them. That we always had the right to go in to buy the property, and we had to replace the APR value on a basis of three to one. That's, That's written into the contract. Okay. We signed off on the APR. On okay. that area? On that area. On that, okay, that's, on yeah. that okay, area that's what I think. 
through the plant because right. of that. Right. And, 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 the trigger, and the trigger does not, and it didn't need to be emergency. It just could be that we had, that was how we had to do our operation, right, John? If I'm remembering. You should be able to yeah. buy that land, pay the price that you have, and if you buy two acres, you have to replace it with six acres on yes. APR. Yep. Hmm. So. How do we get that? Huh? It's amazing. Well, you, you have to buy figure six out. acres and put on the APR, yeah. or buy the APR yeah. rights yeah. on somebody who owns six acres. Sangully Road that we never disposed of. Yeah, gotcha. Right. We have we have land on Sangully. We have. We but have the lawyer made sure that that was in there to make sure if we needed you know, room in the future, we would have it. Sell the development rights on the dump on North Main Street. Yeah, but that's. Yeah, we could do that. Six acres. The other one. Anyway. But if you did have to do the swap with the yeah. land, is What's there land available in East Deerfield that could be utilized for that? Uh, not that we own. You want our job? <clears throat> not that, yeah. Because remember yeah, when we were talking but about the But you can buy compost. it. It doesn't matter. Yeah. It doesn't have yeah. to be owned by us. We could just, right, but, we have, you, know, I just you have to get the money. From from I just, Bruce, I, I make a motion that we adjourn the sewer study committee. Do a second. Second. That was a second. Second. Okay. Aye. All in favor? All right. And we'll all adjourn the selectmen's meeting because this is getting down into the nitty gritty. But yeah, it's nice to have you now. remember some of the stuff, John. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> that Both you like and you know, Robert are, are, are I know. <laughs> encyclopedias of knowledge. Do you know where our second circular clarifier was? We used to have two round, two circular clarifiers there. One froze up 20, 25 years ago, did like you yours did this last year.